Welcome to episode one of Natural Six. <laughs> this is it. This is the real beginning of our adventures in the world of Reliquiae, of our campaign, of our hero's journeys. Uh, you can go back and discover how these heroes met by watching Session Zero and Session 0 0.5 on our YouTube channel. But to all intents and purposes, this is the beginning of the story. This is where it all begins. This is the start of whatever may come. And so I guess, without any further ado, we should play some D&D. Yes, yes, we should. Yes. Yes. Anybody else's yes. 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 like Oh my God. Pure adrenaline. <laughs> I do have a question. What is D&D? <laughs> <laughs> That's a valid question, and I'll explain after the Thank session. Explain as we go. I'd love you to feel your way through it Great. just this time round. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's good. I feel Sorry. exactly the same way. I can't quite believe we're doing it. Okay. Five bottles of rosé later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a hell of a drug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Before this... Before all of this, before breath and thought, before color and light, before the air and the earth, the mountain and the seabed, before life and death, there was Sentiasa. There was only Sentiasa, an endless plain where the gods of good, evil, and chaos, the virtuous, the vile, and the wild were locked in war. It would be wrong to say that the war lasted for centuries or millennia, for they fought before of, before and outside of time. They fought for existence, for the essence of all things that are, were, and could yet come to be. When the war ceased, it was the virtuous who claimed victory, claimed Sentiasa, and vanquished the vile and the wild forever. And the end of that war gave way to a beginning. For as the virtuous beheld Sentiasa, scarred and empty and endless, they were driven to create something new, something good. So the virtuous weaved their divine power into the fabric of a new world, Reliquiae. Lush, green, created for the flourishing of mortal life a crater ringed by a range of mountains called the Alanites, with the great peak of Mount Atria at its centre. At the heart of this new world, they founded the city of Alvelion, where they called into, in, into existence peoples to populate this land. Each of the nine virtuous gods brought forth a race in their image. So the land grew full of halflings, elves, dwarves, Gnomes, tieflings, kobolds, orcs, humans, and dragonborn. A perfect world filled with imperfect beings. And in these peoples flourishing, for all their achievements, there were those that festered. For as dewdrops cling to blades of grass, so avarice and cruelty cling to mortality. And whilst the spring flowers bloomed and the great cities of the world were founded, grievances opened like fresh wounds, and as the wheat was scythed at the time of harvest and the feasting and song lasted long into star-filled nights, so fell mortality to murder and to infighting. The capricious, the rageful, the grieving, the desperate, the lost, sought those who could comfort and advance them. They sought a home and many of them found it in the web. 
the last refuge of the hopeless. A shadowy organization that will undertake any task, no matter how great or terrible. Those who require its services pay with gold or with time, binding themselves and successive generations to servitude until their debt is paid. Such oaths are not taken lightly. And the web is ruled with an iron fist. From its leader, a figure known only as the Spider Prince, to those souls that have spun its silken threads throughout the land of Reliquiae. The web is wide. It is five souls such as these that we will journey with. Having proven themselves of use to the web by assassinating Elven Sion Alea Dakar, the party have been selected to act as bodyguards for the Antiqua, the greatest clerics of the virtuous, as they begin a yearly pilgrimage known as the Deference. A hundred years ago, with no warning, the virtuous abandoned the divine city of Alvelion and ascended to the peak of Mount Atria. Alvelion, since the birth of the world, a city where all could commune in person with the virtuous soon fell into disrepair. So now, after the first winter moon, the Antiqua ascend Mount Atria and bring back teachings for all mortality. The dawn breaks, golden, on the slopes of the mountain. On the edge of a pass, the flames of two small campfires flicker in the mild breeze either side of a collection of tents. Far below, at the foot of the mountain, the crumbled buildings of the city of Valvelion are just visible, pale against the snow that has sat thick on the ground since the first moon of winter. In the years since the virtuous abandoned that city, a city they had called home since the birth of the world, Alvelion has crumbled. Not from war, nor from the slow decline of all things, but with unnatural speed, as if it was the presence of the divine alone that had held together the stones from which the city has built. Yet the snow and the cold and the dissolving marble of Alvelion are far beneath you. Here, on Mount Atria, the mountain of perpetual spring, the air is warm, the grass lush, patches of wild flowers blooming, even in the fissures in the rock face. Can everyone just roll me a d20 and we'll just see who has the highest roll? <laughs> What'd you get, Dolly? 11. I? 16. 18. 17. 18. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Let's have Radian and Kelnis roll again. What did you get? Seven. I got a three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we begin uh, in the left hand of these two campfires with I, Kelnis, and Endelian sat uh, around them. Why don't you why don't you start for us, Kelnis? Why don't you introduce your character? Introduce my character? What yeah. to them? Or no, to, no. to our to our our audience. Well, our lovely audience. Um Kelnis is a gold dragonborn, and um, he is sitting by the fire very carefully carving a piece of wood into a shape. And how much how much introduction do you want us to do? As much as you as you'd like. You know, there are people listening to this who have not... Who have not watched anything. Would you, no? would you give us a poem, maybe? Some sort of... <laughs> maybe some kind of... A, a, at least I a limerick. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Kellis, I do love your improvised poetry. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Trees. Trees are good. <laughs> Trees are green. Trees make me feel good in my spleen. God, he's good. <laughs> you can't coach that. <laughs> Kelnis is a dragonborn, gold dragonborn, and uh, he's a he's a druid. And currently, he is sitting by the fire, looking. Con you know, he's contemplating life and the universe and everything, and gently carving a piece of wood into a shape, and wiggling his toes by the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, and Delian. Uh, 
Endelion is uh, a human fighter. Endelion is all about the sword and the dagger. Life is simple now, well, now life is simple. Everything can basically be fixed in life with a strong word and a stronger sword. And that's how, you know, endelion has been living. Endelion feels most at home in the forest, in the outdoors, absolutely values freedom. And while we might be happy to have our freedom and be outdoors, we're not exactly thrilled with the company that we're keeping. Uh, Indelian is definitely somebody who just wants to figure the world out on their own, preferably in silence. <laughs> um, but, but has a debt to pay, and we need to get through that debt in order to have the freedom that we crave. So right now, Indelian is by the fire and is absolutely praying that I doesn't say anything stupid. For once, be quiet. I'm tired. And I? I is <laughs> a small little cobalt rogue. I is curious, inquisitive. I is, I is curious to a level where Anything that I go rushes head forward into is not purely for the sake of chaos. It is for the sake of intrigue. It's for the sake of a kobolds keep themselves to themselves. They're a lesser seen race, uh, but this does also mean that I naturally has a curiosity for anything that is not within the normal realms of kobold life. Um, and I is sat by the fire using uh, <laughs> 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 using <laughs> using little pebbles just to like kind of throw in the direction of Mendelian <laughs> and is just sitting there going what is we thinking what is we thinking <laughs> is we good <laughs> so at this point, you guys have been together. You've been climbing the mountain for two full days. This is the beginning of the third day. Um, you've been in this habit of making camp. You sit on watch. I mean, it's been, I would say so far, the journey has been relatively dull. This is a, this is a magical mountain. This is a divine mountain. <laughs> Whilst it might be, you know, hailing or blowing a storm um, away from the mountain, the mountain is always in spring. The flowers are always blooming. It, it you know, that you haven't found any aggressive creatures. You haven't been waylaid. You don't have high, highwaymen. You're here almost as a, a nominal bodyguard. Because during the deference, uh, the Antiqua, who are the clerics that you're that you're guiding, they forego all their divine magic while they're on the mountain as a sort of symbol of humility, as a symbol that they recognize that the gods that they are about to commune with are greater and more powerful than them and that all their magic comes from these gods. So as a sign of respect, they don't use their magic. And so they, they have a bodyguard to, to support them in, if, if anything should happen, but and Deli and I, I would fancy it's been quite a dull few days for you. There's been remarkably little, <laughs> frankly, twatting of anything. <laughs> Keep throwing those pebbles. <laughs> She's been miserable to be with. She just complains all the time. She says nothing. When are we going to fight something? Yeah. She has been having great time. <laughs> and we cut over to the right hand, um, right hand fire, and there are three figures around that fire, uh, first of which... Radiant, could you introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, this, I am Radiant Thornbear. Uh, he is um, a wood elf wizard, um, and he has this stunning golden skin that has been harrowingly torn apart at some point in his past. And his face is so structurally beautiful, it would dazzle anyone, but at the same time, it possesses this kind of um, hideous desecration at the same time. And it is, it's almost like if you were to taste it, it would be the most beautiful nectar, but it would be sour in some way. And, and 
he constantly has his hood up um, and this beautiful golden skin he kind of tries to hide from the world. Um, he doesn't remember who he is and I think that is an important thing. Like he is, a, he is, as we will continue to learn, there are lots of things about his past that he doesn't know. And so he has this almost kind of reserved anger, reserved curiosity, reserved um, arrogance, because he's just trying to figure out who he is. And so there's almost like an erratic nature to this person because um, he's just testing the boundaries. The most interesting thing I love about his appearance is that um, one of his eyes changes color all of the time. And um, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes from here. And so I would imagine if Radian were sitting around the fire, he would probably be staring directly into the fire. I think um, there is this something within him that I think is that maybe his memories will come back to him in some way. There's something about his past will just stir. Um, and so he will just be staring into the fire, waiting, waiting for something to happen, waiting for something to spark inside of him. Um, probably looking a little bit emo, um, but there's a lot more to it than that. Can you roll me a history check? Yes. So D20 and then add your history modifier in your skills. Uh, that is a... That is a dirty 21. A dirty 21. Shame, not 20. You would have remembered everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm back. Uh. <laughs> so you're doing this thing that you've found yourself doing before. Almost yeah. if you can get into a meditative state, if you can close everything else out, maybe you can break through this, this barrier, yeah. this feeling. Maybe you can permeate that and get through to the truth of, 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 of everything. Understand, remember and you go back and you, you take it almost step by step, retracing your steps. Yeah. The path up the mountain, the time in Alvelion waiting for the Antiqua to arrive from their various, uh, from their various estates in cities like Baroon and Lode, Escalon, uh, Caressian, uh, all these cities, Vale, all the cities all across Reliquia that they've come from. And then you remember the journey back to Escalon. You remember the party with Alea de Car. You're pushing your memory, pushing your memory. The, the basilisk meeting the spinner, pushing your memory. And then you hit the barrier that you always hit. Yeah. Which is lying face up in water, waking on the shores of the Lake Cova with your brother leaning over you and saying, thought we'd lost you there for a minute. And beyond that, it's just black. Yeah. He doesn't trust. He doesn't trust at all. Um, but he, this life, this life being thrust into this, um, this world, this web, he doesn't know. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't trust his feelings at all. Like, he goes from anger to happiness to joy instantly. There is no control because he just has no control over any of them. And um, he, he feels betrayed, I think. He feels betrayed to be here. Um, and um, he's, yeah, he's, he's in a bit of a state. And sat next to him, Dolly. Uh, so Dolly De Winter is a tiefling bard. Um, she's not not musical though. Um, she's always had a way with words, and that's always been her gift. Um, and it's not always been uh, a gift of, on a in a positive way. Um, but uh, she's here today. She's endlessly optimistic and um, quite chaotic, but revels in that. Um, so at the minute, she sees Radian's um, sort of in a bit of a funk and uh, is casting th thaumaturgy on the fire and making it flicker different colors and being like, Radian, it's your bath. <laughs> 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 it's time for a dance party. Don't stop it. Not <laughs> well, I have to say, I'm very excited. I'm not. Okay, I don't trust this. I don't trust any of it. And there's a third figure at the fire with you, who is a heavy-set, pale-skinned man, um, great big 
chest, barrel chest, big arms, a dark um, beard, almost black, and long, slicked back black hair. And this is Morgan. And Morgan, you first met back at the, uh, when you met the spinner after the basilisk. He was one of the spinner's attendants, almost a heavy. And he met you in Alvelian. There, the web wanted someone a little more senior to lead the effort. Uh, whether or not you'd proved yourself competent, you hadn't necessarily proved yourself perfectly sociable. Uh, and so they needed someone who could act as a bit of a figurehead. Um, and Morgan is sat here watching, and he's a man of few words, gruff. Uh, roll me a perception check, Dolly, as you play with the flames and try and tease, uh, try and tease Radiant. <laughs> Uh, that is, where are we at, hold on, sorry, skills up, uh, perception you say, mm. uh, that is 15. 15. You're, you're pretty sure that you see something quite unusual, which is the beginnings of the flicker of a smile from Morgan. You haven't seen him really show much emotion beyond kind of basic commands. He'll chat a bit, but he's always felt quite guarded, but there was something about that that he kind of enjoyed, and then as, as soon as he catches you looking, he sort of literally wipes the smile off his face. <clears throat> right, well, um, <clears throat> sun's almost up. We should, should think about heading off as soon as the, uh, as soon as the antique will rise. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. I mean, <laughs> come on, it's been a boring couple of days. <laughs> we need something ha to happen. I thought this was like, this is meant to be a big deal. What's... Come on. I mean, it's not a party. Yeah, but it could be. Kind of. I don't like parties. <laughs> <laughs> that shocks me. <laughs> well, we should summit later today, so the antique was say. Uh, everyone roll me perception, please. Wait, active perception or? Active, always, whenever it's a oh. roll, it's always active. You only ever use your passive per perception. It's only ever really relevant to me, not to you. Uh, 25 to 30. Anyone rolls super well? 25 to 30. Yes. Uh, anyone rolled 20 to 24. Oh, great. So are, Radian, we, are we adding our modifiers? Or yes, just, so, oh, so okay. this would be your perception modifier in whatever your skills is in. Okay. Uh, what did everyone else get? We've got a, tw we've got a 21. We've got a 21. 17. 10, I'm deep in my carving. Deep in your deep, carving. Deep. <laughs> deep in your whittling. Nine, at this point, I am attempting to juggle pebbles miserably. <laughs> Roll me performance. Yes. <laughs> 20, dirty 20. Okay. Right, it's inadvertently, dirty. Dirty. it's inadvertently very um, amusing and entertaining, but not for any of the reasons you think it is. Okay. What, you, what you were hoping for was this kind of display of dexterous skill, and instead it's like uh, accidentally very sophisticated clowning. It, like full kind of, it's really, it's- Full it's, court gesture. Yeah, it's hard, it's even, even in Delian, you would, you would be forced to acknowledge that it is it, it's probably it's the impressive. best. It's the best thing he's done, right? That, yeah, may, that like may be small low potatoes, bar, yeah, but, but it's the best thing he's done. It's better than the noise of him throwing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dolly, what, 14. Yeah, 14, okay. So, I mean, you'd all kind of hear this gradually, but certainly, Raiden, you would be the first one who snaps into awareness of it. There is this little kind of collection of tents, nine tents, and each is decorated in slightly different ways, the nine tenths of these antiqua who were round, and you hear a sort of a stretching of canvas, and the first of the antiqua pokes their head out. And as it, as it has been on the other days that you've woken with them, the first one to put their head out is Grawnoth. And Grawnoth is a dwarf, a cleric of Ullin. Uh, he has proved to be the most amenable, the, the, the most likely to talk in a genuine way with you. Some of the Antiqua have really kept themselves to themselves, um, but others, others have been a little warmer. And he's the first one, and he looks over, in fact, at you, Radian, as you, as you look over at him, and he, uh, he sort of, he, little hand of acknowledgement, and then you see him sort of stretch and kind of work. Morning! Like, Hey, good morning. Good morning, and another beautiful day on the mountain. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> uh, of course, how could it not be? Goroth, can you do me a favor? Mm. Can you get the others up? Roll me persuasion with disadvantage. 
<laughs> one. You rolled it out one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, he he puts his hand on your shoulder and firmly, but not unkindly, uh, says to you, "I understand your desire to get off this mountain, but." The beauty you will see at the peak will make up for any uh, frustration you feel now. The antique will, will rouse themselves. We will go through the rites, and we will be on our way. I can't believe you just told him to get everybody up. <laughs> and he sort of he sort of like walks off towards the little cluster of tent, and you can see like more of the antique antique are are, are rousing themselves. Um, you look across, and Morgan is. His eyes are boring into you, um, and he and he, uh, quite unkind. He says, "Don't ever do that again." Radiance and trouble. <laughs> That's not your place. All right. That's what I'm here for. Radiant then stares him directly in the face, and then just walks off. Okay. What are the rest of you doing? You're seeing all the antique kind of getting out. You, you've got you've got your own kind of packs and and various things, bed rolls that fire needs to be doused. I'm I'm entirely packed already. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's already in the car. I am entirely packed already, and I I turns to, to Rainy and goes, I can do it. Oh, <laughs> I just leave him, let him go. What are you whittling? A spoon. <laughs> a spoon? Mm. Walnut. Oh, nice. A walnut spoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you pick that walnut up on the way, or? Mm. Nice. There's been an amazing collection of trees actually on the way up here, mm. and and those I'm of you who yeah, yes. those of you who've travelled more widely would would know that there are uh, there are lots of different. Wood. There's lots of different wood. There's lots of different forests in Reliquia. There's kind of pine, and there's walnut, and then there's the walking forest of Lathi, which seems to be like a sentient tree. So things all completely of them of their own, uh, of their own making. But it's like, it's like this is the, this is the crucible of all creation here. And so there are flowers that you've maybe heard of. That exist on this mountain, fruits that you've heard they have in distant markets on the other side of the continent, but they all seem to bloom and flower and grow here. And so I would imagine that for Kelnis in particular, there's maybe been a. It's been great. Yeah, there's been a bit of a thrill. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm like on the side of the path all the way up, going, "Oh, that's a nice one." <laughs> Ooh, that too. My pack is overflowing with pieces of wood, twigs, and, yeah, and twigs, flowers, and logs, petals stuck everywhere. Yes. Um, I've got a daisy chain in my... Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, the dolly mate. <laughs> yeah, the dolly yeah. mate. Yeah. While this conversation is going on, I have... I have just started to pack for Kelnis. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How many spins have you got on you right now? How many have you made? Oh... Three dozen, maybe. <laughs> Can I have that one? <laughs> just spoons. Oh, you want a spoon? Yeah. Oh, excellent. I do like when people like my spoons. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see it? It's not finished yet. <gasps> How good is the spin? Um, roll. <laughs> me, okay, let's say Kelnis. Can you roll me a a sleight of hand check to see how um, dexterous you've been? So it'll be in your skills um, under sleight of hand towards the bottom. Come on! Oh, six spoons. Spoons. It's uh, nine plus three. Okay. Twelve. It's um. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a nice spoon. It's a spoon. It's a nice spoon. Yeah, like, like not only it, it, it has function, but it has some form as well. And um, what have you been carving and whittling it with? Oh, just a, just a little, 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 little knife. Yeah, uh, but, uh, the spoon. Uh, the spoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's a fork actually. <laughs> it's a wooden knife. <laughs> so what you see, like what 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 Kelnis hasn't done is he hasn't yet. Um, worked out the tool marks within the the, the handle of the mm. spoon or the or the bowl of the spoon, and so it's like it has a cubist a, spoon. Yeah, it's a cubist <laughs> spoon. So it has a kind of, like you said, it's not finished yet. You know, it's kind of a still still has a quite a rough quality to it, but 
you can there's like a very consistent thickness in the bowl and and, and there's a, a kind of gentle gentle roundness of forming roundness to the handle there's a tiny little bit of embellishment where he's kind of carved a little groove into the into almost the end of the handle you can see that it's going to be a wonderful spoon it's going to be a wonderful i'm going to this is this is my no already my favorite spoon i'm going to tuck it into my belt and be like keeping this one it, it's not finished oh do you want to finish it <laughs> yes <laughs> please i mean it's perfectly serviceable it's not finished. Okay, fine. Okay. And while this I, is all I'll, cont- I'll finish and <laughs> okay. give back to you. While this is all continuing, I is attempting to pack kill this is bag, but every time he keeps spilling a spoon and he's just walking around picking up spoons. Roll me a D twelve. You did say you made twelve spoons, right? Uh, it's a three dozen. Three dozen. Three dozen. Okay, normally three D twelve. I don't know why though. Yeah, Can yeah, I take that back? It's canon. It's canon. Yeah, three. Here. Oh, actually, yeah, at the same. Yeah, yeah go on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we've got a nine. Oh, that was, that's a d20. So. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. You need another d20. No, 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 so no, there we go. On. Come on. Uh, we've got a nine, a ten, and a five. Okay, so there's, you dropped 24 spoons. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there is, again, again, roll me, another, roll me a performance check with advantage. So roll twice and take the highest score for advantage. Oof. Good. Uh, 11, okay. uh, four, uh, 12, sorry. Okay, it's, it's not as funny as the juggling, but it is, it is, <laughs> it is, it is, it's a sense when you go and see like a theatre company or you go and see a film and you can tell the director isn't at the height of their powers anymore. That's the experience you're having. <laughs> watching, watching, watching I struggle with 24 spoons, 12 of and which I, have I actually watched, stayed in the bag, which is a blessing. I watch this with despair on my face. <laughs> my spoon. <laughs> I stop it. Um, I I take this very literally and immediately just drop everything. Freeze. Okay, <laughs> thirty six spoons are on. <laughs> um, Can I just say, um, you then hear a noise and Radian just goes ah, oh, and he realizes that there are actually more spoons in his bag <laughs> as well. Spoons. So Kelness, please. So um, stop putting your stuff in my bag. I've said this for the third time. I, I, I ran out of spoons. We had this conversation Boom. before. Do not put your things in my bag. Can you roll me a um, perception check? You've got a little further up the pass, um, Radian. Uh, 13. Okay, so you can just about make out movement right down at the base of the mountain. You left Alvelian, but what you'll be returning to is something a little different, which is called the Festival of Benediction. And the Festival of Benediction is when the, when the, the Antiqua descend with these instructions from, from the gods, from the virtuous. They, they're going to give the instructions and then there's like a, a festival. It's a festival for the, for the true beginning of winter. And you can just about make out these great big stretched tents like bell tents, brightly coloured and all overlapping each other. It almost looks from up here like a collection of autumnal leaves all overlapping on the ground. And you can see that there are more of these, that spread even since the sun went down last night. Um, And by now the Antiqua have all started to to rouse themselves and they're bundling up their their tents, but what they're also doing is uh, going to perform a ceremony that they performed yesterday that you watched called The Rites. And there is a little copy of a a dark book, a a brown leather bound book. And you, in fact, everyone roll me a religion check because it might be interesting because maybe one or two of you might not have seen this before. So... Uh, D20 plus your religion modifier. Let's start with Radian. It's a 10. It's a 10. And Delian? 3. Kelnis? Dirty 20. Dirty 20. I? Also a 10. A 10. And 4. Do- okay, a 4. Um, in fact, maybe kind of Kelnis is maybe the only one who instantly recognizes it. But what, what's your, you got a 4, a 10, three. a 3. Ten. And a ten. Okay. I have to have a minus one. <laughs> so, yeah, the I, minus yeah, one yeah, to yeah. inherit yeah, religion. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm not smart. Erase a re- religion from my brain. But even um, you, you would recognise this straight away, Kelnis, as, as a copy of the Remnants, which is the sort of universal religious text, almost like a, a kind of the one sacred text. 
every race, every god has their own sort of subtext that they read. Um, that's a terrible phrase, but they, they have their own they have their own sort of native text written in their native language and that reflects more kind of their culture. But but the remnants is the universal text that, that talks about the beginning of the world and talks about the divine war um, and talks about the beginning of the endless peace, which is this time that you live in now. And there's this brown leather tome of the remnants, which is placed on a little pillow. And then the Antiqua are all, some of them are on little kneeling stools. Some of them have just kneeled on the grass. You notice comes that Gronoth the dwarf immediately just kind of kneels down on the grass. Uh, and they are kneeling in a sort of semicircle around this, uh, this, this pillow with this copy of the book. And Morgan at this point uh, in inclines his head and says, right, come on, stand to attention. And he sort of stands behind the Antiqua and he play, clasps his hands in front of him and he bows his head and he sort of waits for you to do the same. Does anyone want to try and go against the convention or are you all quite happy to go along with this? I immediately run up beside him and just the sa exactly the same as he I does. straight away there. I'll stand to attention, but I won't. <laughs> Not the religious life. Okay. Not for sure. Me. So you're so a little bit like when um, people are quite content to listen to a prayer, but don't like saying amen. Basically. That's the vibes. Yeah. To be clear, uh, when I does it, it's not in a out of a, like a deference or anything. It's it's purely a this is what we're doing. Okay. Yep. Follow oh, the, you yeah. didn't need to be clear. <laughs> 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 yeah. He's, he's yeah. always he's yeah. always yeah. experimenting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's never thinking conceptually. <laughs> yeah, well, no, we, we we understood where you were going. With that. <laughs> okay. So um, unless anyone else has anything that they would like to particularly do this rite ceremony begins and you see um, one of the one of the Antiqua steps forward and it's um, a brightly green skinned orc and she's called Runa and you have uh, you've been you've been dealing with the Antiqua a bit as I said Runa keeps themselves to themselves uh, she has a kind of warrior like uh, posture uh, an orc of few words, uh, not dissimilar to Morgan, really, in terms of how 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 she carries herself, and she um, sort of rises to her feet from her knees and stands in front of the, her compatriots. Has this book which she picks up. It suddenly looks very small in her huge hands. Um, uh, Everybody roll me insight checks, please. So d20 and then add your insight skill to it, which is your wisdom, oh. plus any proficiencies. What did you get, Raiden? Ten. Ten? Seven. Seven? Seven? Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Eighteen. Eighteen? Nineteen. Nineteen, okay, so certainly uh, Kelnis and uh, Dolly and I, you can see straight away that Runa is not in her element. She doesn't like being stared at. She doesn't like um, being... Uh, the center of attention, and uh, she sort of <clears throat> clears her throat a little bit, opens this book to the first page, <clears throat> a few little sort of <clears throat> little nasal exhalations, she cracks her neck, and she starts to read, and what she starts to read is very, very familiar to all of you, apart from possibly I. <clears throat> the gods are real. All life flows from them. Without them, there is nothing. There can only be nothing. <clears throat> Before the creation of all things, the gods existed in an endless dark. Without, within them lay a uh, dormant or knowledge or light or colour, sound, speech and thought. Yet all the powers lurked within, <clears throat> without, within this boundless black. Things great and terrible. These words are not my own, they were spoken by the divine, given shape by their breath and meaning by their minds. All life flows from them, without there there is nothing. And all the rest of the Antiqua say, there can only be nothing. Uh, immediately, you give a little, you give a, you give a little clap. Um, and one of the heads of the Antiqua immediately snaps round. Um, and it's um, an, a very haughty elven face, a little golden circlet round, uh, their, um, round their head, a sharp featured silvery hair, um, and they look at you with suspicion. Did you try and imply, Dolly, there, that it, you point at 
You point at Mike. So Dolly, <laughs> roll deception to see if you can make it look like it was just I who clapped. Absolutely. Oh, God damn it. Absolute children. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you? Yeah, huh? <laughs> Uh, so I rolled a four, but Dolly's very good at deception, so it's an 11. Okay. Whoa. Um, whoa, whoa jamming. Whoa. Jamming. <laughs> I'd, say, <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say within 11, that just about breaks it. They, the, the antique were very much in, the, in, their, in their moment of kind of religious fervor, and so by the, t- by the time you look round, um, you see this elf, who you know is called Barabasque, um, turns around and looks at you and glares daggers at you and says... Um, you know, gives it, oh, heavens, and looks to the kobold cleric and says, Parvus, can't you control your minion? And then looks back at Runa. Can you roll me? Well, in fact, you wouldn't even need to roll for this. They, they just called, they just called that cleric Parvus. That kobold has a name. Yeah. You've never known a kobold with a name. Yeah. And once the head snapped back, uh, Runa, who then has to try and flick through the pages, and you can see she's sort of got claws on her hands and therefore is struggling a little bit, still seems a little nervous, even after the polite applause that greeted her initial reading. <clears throat> she, she flicks through a few pages um, <clears throat> virtuous children are instructed to love and to learn. We grow by divine favour, find glory by divine grace, find comfort in, in uh, divine power. We make this pilgrimage in deference and all humility, knowing that we cannot wander this world alone now as ever they are the compass. And the rest of the Antiqua say, they guide and command. And Runa looks, immediately closes the book and gives this great big exhale. <sighs> uh, looks very, very relieved to be done with public speaking. The, okay. Yeah. Are, are like, you like 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 literally not even audible, but it's just for 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 self. Just. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll something for Runa. Yeah, Runa, despite herself, looks up and mouths. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she was really quite charmed by it. Yeah. Um, and so what you do, what you also see is you, is you see that each of the Antiqua offer their own kind of personal gestural sort of sign offs to that. To that little thing, they sort of so um, the uh, you see um, the cleric of Ignas kind of makes a shape with their hand, almost like a flame. Uh, that the the elf um, that the Barabbas kind of creates this tree with his hands. It's very ornate. His takes twice as long as everybody <laughs> else's. Um, uh, you know, it always reminds me of Rimmer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and and they they finish and they start getting their bed rolls and they they sort of they're they're packing up for the day and you get the sense that. These are the last few moments before you get on the road. Is there any anything that that anyone wants to do? What I am going to get from you when we leave is a kind of marching order, and to see if you're if you're kind of trying to chat with any of the antiqua, if you're chatting amongst yourselves. But what Dolly's going to try and pick up some of the spoons that were spilled on the ground and do what she does every morning, which is try and stuff them into Radian's bag. <laughs> <laughs> so roll me roll me three d twelve. <laughs> Yes! 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 Mm. I love that we're on this side of the table. <laughs> it's like you just need crayons at this point. You know what I mean? Like that's how it's to be. my boy. <laughs> my boy is in pain. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, you get eleven spoons into Radians. Uh, well, you get eleven spoons ready for Radians back. Roll me a sleight of hand check. See how okay. how good you are okay. at getting them in there without him noticing. Wait, so how many spoons are go- are going to be in Radiant's bag now? Yeah, well, potentially 11. Potentially 11, but we'll see. Plus what was already in there. Plus what was already in there. Yeah, yeah what yeah. was already in there. What, whatever she got in there yesterday. 17. That beats your passive perception. So yes, it does. I, yes, think, it does. I think in the... in the, um, in the woods anyway. In the, in the kind of... The, the, the gentle but, but kind of meaningful commotion of everyone packing up... Um, you are unaware of, of 11 spoons being snuck Can into I say pack. that what he does is he picks up his bag, not knowing that there's 11 spoons are in there, and he walks over to Barabasque, mm-hmm. and he says, I'm so sorry about my colleagues. That was very inappropriate. Roll me a uh, persuasion check. 
No, it's okay. It's 15. 15. <laughs> so, I thought you were going to be like, you know what, actually, yeah. I, I don't say anything to <laughs> You know what, it's okay if he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he I changed his mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Barabask, Barabask um, looks, uh, looks to you and sort of gives a, a look underneath his, sort of from underneath his eyebrows and says, this is a sacred ritual. It is a rare honor to find yourselves on the Divine Mountain. Clearly you are aware of that, and that speaks to your credit, but I cannot say the same for the rest of your companions. I would advise you to do what is in your power to keep them in line, or do I need to talk to the brute that leads you? And he looks to Morgan, who is just packing away. Do you lead these bag of scoundrels? Yes. <laughs> right. Well, in that case, I shall hold you personally responsible for any other faux pas. Of course. At this point, having seen Dolly mm -hmm. play her little trick, mm -hmm. I walk over to Radiant and say, Can I have my spoons back? <laughs> I gave you your spoons back. Mm -hmm. Look, I'll show you. There's nothing in my... <laughs> <laughs> Who put spoons in my bag? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, Dolly points at I. Roll me a uh, roll me roll me, roll me a deception check again. Oh, natural one. Oh, oh no, no, it's a seven. Oh, it's, a, it's, a seven. Oh, it's a seven. It's a seven, it's a seven plus seven. I don't know why I'm happy. No, about I had that. the same. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> no, no, it's a seven. Uh, uh, for, well, so uh, yeah, I mean, I think with a fourteen, you both did it. Was they're, it both? They're of in you? cahoots. Was it both of you? Um, I am totally unaware because this entire time, un un like unbroken, I have just been watching. I'm no not even hearing. Mm. I'm just staring at Parvis mm -hmm. because in, in a, just a way where I'm just watching because I've never known a co with a name for. I'm just watching to be like, are you like me? Roll me a perception check. Silence is an admission of guilt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> My dear lord. Again, I have no wisdom. That is a two. <laughs> That's a two. Okay. Um, Survive. You, uh, Parvis, Parvis is in conversation with um, the uh, the dragonborn cleric. The two of them are speaking. They have their back, backs to you. You can't make out uh, any sound, and there, there's kind of too many people in the way, kind of people, if you like, wiping the frame back and forth. What you do suddenly become aware of is uh, the rest of your party are staring at you, as is... Barabask, um, who just says, right, explain yourself. Um. <laughs> and you have no idea why at this point. Okay, <clears throat> so I turn around and immediately look at everyone and just go and point at Dolly. <laughs> Roll me deception with disadvantage. Roll twice, take the lowest. <laughs> Three. Okay. Um, uh, um, Barabask turns to you, Radian, and says, if this is an indication of your ability to command, it reflects upon you very poorly. And he just sweeps off to join the rest of the Antiqua. I'm sorry, command? Yeah, I I also am interested in that, says Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fascinated, in fact, that you've seen fit to usurp me on... I know how this looks. <laughs> I'm not sure you do. <clears throat> I simply went over to Barabas to apologise for what the others have been up to, and I panicked. He asked if I was in charge, and I said, yes. Now, it also means that if anything goes wrong, the responsibility is entirely on me, so maybe, Morgan, finally you can, you know, you don't have to take the fall for how useless everyone's being, but please, come on, we've got to get this together. Uh, Morgan, uh, roll, me, roll me a persuasion check. Let's see, let's see how Morgan takes it. It's a one. It's a one. Not great. Okay. Not great. So not great. Actually, great. Not great is a really good. Is, is really good. Um, so yeah, he says, "My orders come from the spinner. They don't come from you. Get in line." And um, the antique will start to set off. Morgan is going to position himself just ahead of them. Uh, there are nine Antiqua, and they all sort of walk in a, in a little cluster, um, start to make their way up the mountain pass. Where would you guys like to position yourselves within that cluster? You can kind of be in there trying to chat with people, or you can flank, or you can go behind, or you can go up front with Morgan. Where, where do people feel like they'd like to go? 
Just a little behind Parvus, just again, just the entire way, barely even looking where I'm going, just staring. Eyes fixed on Parvus. Okay, Dolly, where are you? I'm uh, walking just slightly behind Radian, going, you're in trouble again. <laughs> where are you, Radian? I'm right at the back. Right at the back. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so Dolly and Radian at the back. Um, I'm going to say I is kind of towards the middle, trying to get towards Parvus. Kelnis and Endelian, where do you think you guys are? I'll take point. I'll be up front. Yep. Morgan and Endelian. And then Kelnis, where are you? I think I've gone up front as well. I think I quite like Morgan. Straightforward dude, you know? Mm. You get what you see. Likes your spoons. You Likes my spoons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loves your spoons. Party at the front. I think these are the kinds of spoons that at a farmer's market you'd sell for like $50. Oh, yeah. right. in, um, oh 100 in, They're in, artisan in, spoons. In, in yeah. Wales, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have the Welsh Love Spoon, which is intricately carved wooden spoons that have lover's knots on the top. Oh. They're really in, they're a quite an integral part of Welsh culture, but when everyone says like a carved wooden spoon to me, I always imagine a Welsh mm. Love Spoon. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, well, so, I have 11 of them in my bag. <laughs> right? If you can find a market, then yes, we get back saying, down I'm going to sell the, these spoons. The party of Benny. There is quite literally um, a market for that. After the yeah. deference, these are getting sold. <laughs> um, so you begin your third day of climbing, and you're still following this, this pass of pale stone, almost marble, that has wound through these groves of budding trees and, and then alongside clear streams and patches of brilliant wildflowers and these little smooth rock clusters. And now it bends its way lazy towards the summit. And the smooth path underfoot, it, despite the smoothness of the stone, it sort of offers this unerring grip. And there are clusters of crystals all along its length, brightly coloured and shimmering in the sun that has now fully risen, this winter sun that across the rest of the continent might be cold, but here still feels balmy and, and warm. And the rest of you can now start to see what, what, what Radiant saw, these, these clusters of tents like autumn leaves right down at the base as, as, the, as the, uh, the rest of the populace prepare for the Festival of Benediction. So. Let's start with I. Um, roll, me a, roll me a stealth check yep. to see how close you can get to Parvus without anyone kind of feeling like you're in his space. Uh, 18. 18. Um, so you get right up close behind and you can hear he, he's speaking to uh, the, uh, the, the cleric of the Dragonborn, who is this very, uh, this beautifully golden dragonborn. She's called Carvilius. And she has been a been, she's felt like quite a senior figure um, within the antique. Well, you can you've been able to gauge, even in the time that you've all been there, that there are there are some who are happy to go with the flow, and there are some who feel the need to be a little bit more upfront and take more command. And certainly Carvilius would fall into that latter character uh, that latter ca uh, category. And you hear her, um, you hear her speaking with, with Parvis. And she says to him, the cloud cover, so low, do you see that? And Parvis responds, and you've never heard Parvis's voice, voice before, but, uh, yes. Ext extremely low, and I've never seen um, cloud cover quite so low on the mountain peak. <clears throat> Roll me a, a, an insight check. Eighteen. Eighteen. It sounds like Parvis is trying desperately to alter their voice. You know how how kobolds talk. This is not a syntax and a and a, a way of speaking that you've heard from Parvis, it's, it's almost like he's trying to copy the way Carvilius speaks. Um, yes, of, I, I wonder, it will be very interesting, of, of course, to talk to the virtuous when we ascend, and I wonder wh wh whether the cloud formation is, is perhaps something to do with them. <laughs> and Carvilius, uh, simply looks down and says, yes, we will, we will ask them when we reach the peak, of course. It's a good thought, Parvis. Very good. Uh, and he's just going to roll a little perception check. 
uh, he rolls really high, and he just turns around and sees you, I, looking at him, and immediately uh, l- l- tries to avert his eyes, tries desperately not to make eye contact. Eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, says to Cavalier, uh, if, if it's all the same to you, my dear esteemed friend, I will <coughs> see, see how... See how, uh, how 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 Demillo is getting on? Uh, yes, of course, of course. Don't 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 trouble yourself. And he starts to slip through the crowd, heading towards a, a little a, a halfling cleric. Um, do you want to try and follow him, or are you content with what you've heard? I'm content with what I've heard. Um, I would now like to. So they, so uh, Parvis went. What was it back? Parvis has um, actually. Yeah, Parvis has pushed pushed himself a little further forward. So you have up front, you have um, the uh, the the uh, Runa, you have the Orc mm-hmm. Runa, uh, you have uh, the Halfling, the Gnome. Mm-hmm. Then you had this little cluster, which is the uh, the Tiefling, the Dragonborn, and the Kobold. And then at the back, you have uh, the Dwarf, the Human, and whoever I've forgotten, the okay. other one. Um, there are nine. It's hard okay. to keep nine yeah. NPCs in your head, really, yeah. when you've had to write accent notes for them all. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, so they, they've slipped, so they've started to go further forward. Okay. I also will, but now I'm content with what I've heard. I'm content. Well, not content, but I, I'm, I'm kind of processing. Uh, moving forward now, would like to just be behind the gnome, just staring at the gnome at the back of the head with a deep sense of distrust. Just literally now, it's just more of a, I'm watching you. Right. Uh, um, they are. They have incredibly low perception, and they um, they rolled a nine, um, and you hear them just humming to themselves. Just humming and having oh, t- quite a merry old... Great. Do, the, do the hum for uh, us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And actually, that's a really lovely reminder that at this point, um, Barabask starts singing. Barabask sings this song for the entirety of the climb all day. And it goes a little something like oh, it's a sort of um and by the goddess mighty hand shum tum 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 ra rum tum a tum I hope did come to this blessed land rum tum rum tum a ta rim pa tum pa tum tum her eyes green her hair of gold rum tum a ta and it and it 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 is it, beautiful. It, Barabask has quite a nasal voice. Yeah. Um, and it's very strident and. <laughs> It's only sort of five or six lines, almost like a memory verse that has just been repeated ad infinitum. It's just, I know a song that'll get on your nerves. Yes, (laughs) it absolutely is. The whole way Um, up the mountain. And they are up the top. I'm going to have... I'm going to have Dolly and Radian, who are towards the back. Can you roll me perception checks? Dirty... Please, the floor is yours. You can. I can. Radian with a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. And a nineteen. Wow. Okay. Um, Sorry. I threw my pen on the floor. No, that's totally fine. It's an emotional moment. It's an emotional moment. It's an emotional moment. It really is the actual the crux of the campaign. This was kind of it. I'm glad it had the impact that I wanted. You see, as soon as the song starts up, put the pen down. (laughs) And you've knocked Indelian over. Oh, gosh, you haven't broken her. No, she's fine. She's Um, fine, okay? So, as soon as the song starts up, you see um, Gronoth's, like, shoulders sag, the dwarven cleric. Um, And you hear him say, oh, do 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 either of you speak dwarvish? No, I okay. Don't you just hear him. You hear him mutter something under his breath, um, and just keeps shaking. Just keeps shaking his head, um, and with a with a with a twenty and a nineteen, you see that his his teeth are clenched, and he's sort of leaning on his staff with every with every step, trying not to react to the song. Um, could um, Radiant immediately, obviously, notice this and rush up to him because he sees it as this moment of kind of weakness. And he just goes, terrible song, isn't it? 
Uh, and he, uh, roll me persuasion with advantage. <laughs> roll me twice, take That's the highest. 20. That's a nat 20. That's a nat 20. Okay, amazing. It crits. Yeah, it crits. <laughs> it crits. Um, he, lo- he looks at you and he says, You would think, after so long in one another's company, he would have found, I would have found a way to find balance in my life, and he wouldn't make me so frustrated. But here we are. Another day in paradise. <laughs> God, it doesn't bode well for us, does it? Um, no, it does not. <laughs> You're even a month. Listen, while I've got you, um, Gror- Groroth, may I call you Groroth? Of course, oh, please. Um, listen, earlier, when I came up to you, I, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean any offence. and None was taken. As you've seen, I am not immune from the frustrations that you feel. <laughs> you know? Uh, we are all striving for balance. And we have to learn when the truth is necessary, when the truth is vital, and when the truth would hurt those that do not deserve our ire. Dolly's gonna sidle up at this point. She's been making a, a daisy chain crown just while, just while we've been walking. She's gonna skip up. She's gonna hand that to Radian and then go, yeah, but the truth is subjective anyway, so like, you know. The truth is subject. That's a very interesting philosophical point of view. Roll me a religion check with advantage. Ooh, that's a natural six. Oh, hey! hey! First one the game. That's hey! another natural six! Hey! Okay, we're dispensing with how the dice work. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a 20. Um, uh, you would know that um, the dwarven goddess Ulin is the goddess of truth. Mm-hmm. And so her whole shtick is you know, you you can't bend from the truth. And the, the dwarven culture, um, occasionally dwarves can be seen as extremely blunt mm. because it's sort of against their faith to even tell a white lie. That would be deceiving someone and you mustn't deceive anybody. Um, and you get the sense that Gronos is a little wiser than that, has learned a little more than that, um, and so is fascinated with this, with this, um, this perspective that you bring to it. It says, I've started to think something similar myself. There are, there are good lies and there are terrible lies. I wonder where the line marks the change from one to the other. I guess, and you know, what this, it's, I mean, it's completely situational, isn't it? It's what it's doing for you in that moment in time. Or what it's doing for the collective, I would challenge you. Maybe, yeah. We are very small, and he gestures to the mountain. He gestures high to the peak. He says, we feel as if we are the only ones, but of course, we are as inconsequential as, as the fruit on the vine, or as a, a bird flying overhead. That is true. Then what is your consequence, Gornoth? What is my consequence? What do you feel you are doing in this world? What change do you feel like you're making? All of this, this pomp, this circumstance, you marching up here, us protecting you, what service does it provide? It's a good question. I wonder whether all this pomp is necessary. I wonder whether our status as sacred, untouchable Antiqua is necessary, and yet, when I turn to the virtuous, turn to the teachings of my God, and the gods that brought all of us into being, this is the task they have assigned to me. And yet, we're here to protect you. We're here to save your life, but if it truly came to it, would you really not use magic? Would you not protect yourself? Would you let yourself die? I hope we never have to find out. And he smiles at you. It fe- he feels, he feels warm towards you. It, it, he's the most. He's been on even in the journey up to this point, the most likely to have a, a real conversation with you. And there's no, there doesn't seem to be any sharpness or malice in those eyes. Roll me an insight. Just see if you can tell of any anything deeper going on beneath the surface. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. It's a two. It's a two. Okay, he's he strikes you as straightforward. He strikes you as truthful, and he strikes you as as, as having having accepted part of what you've said to have been comfortable being challenged in his in his status. Let's um, head up to the front 
to where uh, Morgan and Endelian and Kelnis are um, are plowing on. Credible banter. This <laughs> <laughs> is just not so bad. Extraordinary it's banter. Death banter, friend. Yeah. How many more spoons you made? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What are you What are you doing up there, the two of you? Talking about the forest. There's so many mm. trees. You said this, right? We're mm. walking up this mountain. It's, it, if there's one thing the two of us have in common, it's a love of the forest, of the trees, of the flowers, the noise, the movement, whatever the forest gives. It's the one thing we. Mm. I've been pointing out all the different flowers and their, 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 their qualities. Roll me a nature check with advantage. So roll twice and take the highest. Ooh, that's a dirty 19. Ooh, and a dirty 22. Okay, so, Endelian, you you um, would have grown up knowing a little bit, mm. you know, a fair amount, really, yeah. about the natural world. You've never met anyone who knows as much as Kelnis. And Kelnis, I think you've probably never had as receptive a student, or maybe any student. Um, <laughs> And so to Who have someone this shit up. Oh, no, yes. no, 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 no. I'm, like, I'm, I'm having I, a great ever, time. Yeah, nobody ever wants to talk to me about flowers and moss. Yeah, you know. And as each as each new plant, as each new cluster of 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 flowers, as each new vine and bough hoves into view, um, you know, in Delhi, and you know, with a with a even with just a look to Kelness, he will immediately start to to. Um, to, to, to talk about about what that is. Um, and you even notice that kind of Morgan, despite himself, uh, leans in and, and, and is starting to kind of take take note of you. Um, roll me an insight check, Kelness. Insight. 19. Okay, he's looking at you with respect. Um, he, as I said, hasn't hasn't given much of himself. Hasn't you only know him as Morgan? Hasn't told you where he's where he's from. You've never you, I would suggest, probably haven't particularly tried to interrogate him. Um, but he falls into a kind of easy lockstep with you, and despite his usual kind of military style vigilance, you can see he's sort of almost ready to take part in the conversation if invited in, but doesn't quite know how to do it. Not used to small talk much. I think, and I, and I can I pick up on this. Yeah, you do. Okay, I think I can. Um, I think I uh, noticing this. I want to open the door for him because I, I respect this guy. Mm. He seems like a like I said like a straightforward, reasonable, person. Um, I say you know. Mm. So, Morgan, what do you know of trees? Well, um, um, <laughs> let me find out how much you know. <laughs> <laughs> let me roll the nature for him, he has a minus one. <laughs> he rolled, oh, I thought he rolled a two, he rolled a 12. Okay, so you know. Well, um, m- my, my, my grandfather grew fruit trees. Uh, I know a little about that, used to take cuttings and Grow them, mm. apples, and pears, just stewing fruits really. But um, always seems something quite um, honest about them. You know, you, mm. you you put in, you get out what you put in. Stewing fruits are good. Did you ever climb the trees? And a li- like a little half smile. I was actually very good at climbing trees. Mm, I bet you were. I'm still, I'm still actually very good at climbing trees. And you see, mm. Morgan has is um is he's got this great. He's he's wearing full <laughs> plate armor. Like no, sorry, not full plate. Like a great big breastplate. He's got these like spiked shoulder pads. He's got this huge shield and uh, and a and a sword, a long sword that he's holding in one hand. And he looks for a second. He looks like a twelve-year-old boy. For a second, he's like, oh, probably. I could probably climb. I could probably climb any tree on this mountain. <laughs> I reckon. Okay, and I, 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 I 
I point to an oak about 30 feet away. Mm -hmm. And I say to Morgan, I bet you can't climb that. Roll me persuasion. (laughs) 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 You got this. Come on. So that's dirty 14. Um, okay. He looks over his shoulder. You've you've kind of, you you three are, are kind of used to walking longer distances than some. And the antique were a kind re- reasonably slow. So you're maybe 60 feet ahead at this point, and he chances a look back over his shoulder, and he goes, <laughs> cover for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna, he dashes to this, this he, he hands his sword um, to you, Calus, his shield to Endelion. It's, that it's really heavy. I mean, properly heavy. Yeah. You guys are fine, but you, you're aware that that's a weighty piece of kit. Carry his stuff um, so he can climb trees. And he's gonna make, um, he's gonna make an athletics check to try and climb a tree. <laughs> oh, he rolled five. Oh, no. um, so you Morgan. see, you see. So Morgan starts to. He does that thing where it's not until you're at the base of the tree that you actually realise how tall the tree is mm. and how there aren't really that many branches at low level that will allow you to start the climb. Mm. So. He tries to reach his hands up, but he's inhibited by these great big spiky shoulder things that almost, he can feel the pressure from on his on his ears, and so you see he decides not to do that. So he tries to wrap his arms around the body of the trunk and sort of put his feet flat on it and, and walk up the vertical. Um, and he gets maybe two steps and then his foot slips, uh, and as, as the foot comes back, his head comes forward and um, he, he takes two points of bludgeoning and oh, he just no. face plants into the tree um, and immediately um, kind of jogs back, uh, um, nose kind of slightly slightly bloodied um, and goes, oh, it's the tree, sometimes a tree. Uh, we don't, <laughs> listen, listen, you saw nothing, right? And I'm gonna have him roll intimidation check. He rolled a five again. <laughs> so this, this sort of slightly, with his slightly blooming nose, you saw nothing, all right? and he can't quite make it stick, and sort of like sniffs, and you see his eyes are slightly watering, and he goes, can I have my things back, please? <laughs> now, Kelness, which one of these flowers is good for headaches? Mm, the silver bells. We'll get some silver bells. You pick some silver bells and Delian. Would, Did um, any would, of us notice it at the back? I was gonna say, would it be possible for us to see it? Yeah, you back? can all roll perception <laughs> checks. I'll roll <laughs> collect- <laughs> I'm gonna roll collectively for the Antiqua. Literally Antiqua. after just being told off. Okay, <laughs> right, the Antiqua, the Antiqua rolled a dirty 20 oh, collectively. <laughs> every, every, everyone saw this. Radian? No, I can, sorry, I got an 11. An 11? I got an 11 as well. An 11? It. An 8. I'm gonna say the three of you from where you are can't quite see that. Um, um, uh, at this point, though, Morgan does look up and see that all the Antiqua have sort of stopped and are sort of looking at him. And he said, uh, I thought I heard <laughs> something in the tree. Um, he rolls a... Oh, he has a... He rolls a 15. Oh, yeah. um, oh, which I'm going to say, let's ro- see the insight. Yeah, it doesn't work. Um, oh. he, so, but uh, the an- some of the Antiqua are kind of climbed enough at least not to... Um, to, uh, to, to sort of yeah, point and laugh, and um, you hear a voice um, from the back, uh, the voice of Gronk say, "We are lucky to have you, my friend." <laughs> um, and you start to con- you kind of continue your way up this mountain pass, uh, and I'll have the th- the two of you at the front and Morgan roll perception checks. So Indelian and Kelnis and Morgan all roll perception. I don't think Morgan's going to be much of a help because he rolled an eight. What did Indelian get? Only a 10. A 10? 12. 12. I'd say with a 12, you see a shape, Kelness, not far from the pass as it winds its way round the edge of the mountain. It's a... It's a... It's a bestial shape, and it becomes apparent soon that it's a a bear with brown fur and a silver streak that runs all the way down its spine from the top of its head. Uh, roll me a nature check. Seven. Seven, and you have no modifiers. That's with the modifiers. That's with your modifiers, okay. 
Uh, the bear doesn't look like it's imminently about to attack. Do you tell the others about the bear? I think maybe I'd give a little nod to Endelian okay. and, and point it out to her. Endelian, you can roll a perception with advantage now because it's being pointed out, so roll twice and take the highest. Uh, 13, because I haven't got okay. the fire. Okay, 13. The, the, the bear doesn't look hostile. If anything, it looks kind of quizzical, if that's possible, on a bear. Um, and it stands up on its hind legs, cocks its head to one side, observes you and Morgan and Kelness, and then seems to look down at the Antiqua and the rest of the party, and then just slopes off. Slopes off round the shoulder of the path and out of sight. Quizzical bear gone bye bye. Shantantanara I don't blame it for leaving. If I would have heard of coming, I would have left too. Um so is there anything else on this kind of this little part of the journey? that people want to do, that people would like to, anything yes. else they want, anyone they want to watch out for, go I ahead. literally just want to pick up a pebble. Don't you dare. Throw it at the back of the gnome's head and then just hide. <laughs> okay. Just, just, roll just, me, it's, it's roll a tiny me, Roll me a ranged attack. So it's a thrown <laughs> quality. So what I'd like, what I'd like is for it's you not to... In any, I don't want to do any damage. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is just to see whether or not it hits. Okay. So it will be your strength, not your dexterity because this is thrown. Yeah. Um, so a, a d20 plus your strength modifier, um, and I'm gonna say you're not, I'm gonna say you are proficient in throwing pebbles, so you can add okay. your efficiency bonus. Well, in that case then, it's a 19. It's a 19. You pretty much bullseye the back <laughs> of, <laughs> you pretty much bullseye the back of this gnome's head. Um, this gnome uh, has a, a big curved staff that stops just above their shoulder, it's strapped to their back, and it sort of curls in a swirling pattern. And you manage to sort of dart it through the swirl, and it so they have they have a sort of little green headband, and it just plonks off the off the, the back of their head. Roll me a stealth check. Oh well, twenty that's a nat twenty, so Oh, oh okay. <laughs> um you you watch as this humming little gnome. <laughs> uh, gets clocked to the back of the head and sort of looks round, can't see you, looks up to see whether it was rain, and then on it goes. Just okay. just keeps just keeps just keeps rolling along. I am perfectly content just to have been a minor nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> minor? <laughs> Has anyone seen I? I <laughs> <laughs> is like breath on the wind. <laughs> Um, uh, Radiant just kind of, he's been shuffling alongside um, Dolly, just, um, he's still holding the daisy chain that, that Dolly gave him, and just goes, um, I just want to say sorry for earlier. Um, I know you were just trying to be funny with the, <laughs> with the spoons. And the, yeah. I just, I, over, I overreact. Um, it's fine, I, 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 you know, we spent a, enough time together now that I, I, know, I, I just, get it. I just, I, I get, I get quite stressed. I know, but you know why I'm doing that, I right? I know, I just... It, I'm trying to bring you out of that it, stress it, it, it spiral. It was a lot of spoons. <laughs> Cutlery know. can be scary. I, know, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you for the day's change. That's all right. Hold on to that. What have you done? Giving her a spoon? <laughs> I'm showing you the days of oh, the days yeah, yeah, yeah. which I then, which I then, which I then can like put on my wrist. God, it's yeah. all about the spoons with you. <laughs> um, so. You continue to make your way up. Barabask still, Shantanara, Rantana, like there's still this kind of constant soundtrack of, he's, there's a verse about the goddess's hair, there's a verse about the goddess's hand, there's a verse about the goddess's voice, there's a verse about the goddess's eyes, there's a verse about um, the goddess's be general beauty. Is this just we head, shoulders, knees and toes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well essentially, it, you know, it has a, it's, it's like, it's like it has a sort of, um, like a Morris dancey kind of yeah. that very sort of rhythmic like goddesses on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 
and and as you as you're making your way up, you 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 start to hear, and you start to become aware that there is there is a cloud line on the mountain, like a really dense cloud line, um, thick white cloud that doesn't allow you to see above it. Um, I, why don't you roll me perception because you're right in the middle of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, sixteen. Sixteen. Um, you hear the the human uh, cleric, who's again very sort of statuesque, quite impressive um, human, uh, who leans into the tiefling and says, "It it doesn't seem right to me. It seems something's off, something strange. I've never seen cloud on the mountain." Um, but nevertheless, you continue, and you approach this cloud line. And the closer you get, the more white and the more dense it appears. Are you still in the same order, your same positioning in the in the group? Do you think? So I, at the moment, I've got I in the middle. I've got Morgan and Delian and Kelnis at the front. I've got Dolly and Radian kind of at the back. I think we maybe stay in the same formation, but maybe tighten up a little Tighten, bit. okay. Yeah, I would, having heard that, mm. I'm going to progress, go back to the, like, move forward again. Okay. Not aware that I am a smaller creature, you know, and that my strengths aren't necessarily lying in, you know, strength. Yeah. Um, I will <laughs> remain just <laughs> slightly behind, but I am staring forward now because I have picked up on, I've just, that overwhelming sense of something's not something's right. Something's not quite right. Okay. So you've, you've kind of all concertinaed up a little bit. Um, and there's nothing visible above this cloud line. And the pass leads you up, and then you enter the clouds. And it's for, for the first time you, you're suddenly aware of how high up you are. It's not, you know, you, you should have, on an ascent of this height, have felt some change in your body's ability to to breathe or like heaviness in your legs or maybe you wouldn't be able to walk as far but it's been like walking on flat land something to do with the stones perhaps the magic in them the mountain pass itself the grip it offers but there's been no impediment and yet suddenly your legs start to feel a little heavier and the cloud is cold and it's damp, and it's, it's suddenly sharp on your skin and your scales, and that gentle warmth of the lower slopes feels like it's fading. And as you take a breath, that first breath in the cloud, there's this moment when air doesn't immediately come to your lungs, but then it does, it, 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 it arrives, but it's, it's a little thinner. It's a little harder to find that breath. It's not mechanically going to affect anything in terms of your walking speed or anything like that. And and it it thickens further, the further in you go. And it's it's so dense that even... um, Let's let's have um, Endelian and Dolly make perception checks to just be able to see the people next to you. Only 11 for me. An 11? Dirty 20. A dirty 20. So you can still make out um, Radian... um, but it's like peering through murk. It kind of takes a long time to do it. And there are sounds that you can hear, like a ragged breathing. And it's hard to discern whether it's in front of you or behind you. It might be the antiqua, but it, it feels odd. And Delian, you can't, you are, a, you are almost walking blind at the moment. In this in this cloud, is Gronov close to me? Right Gronov now? is close to you. Can I uh, sort of shout out to him? Gronov, is this normal? What is what's happening here? Uh, no, no, this is this is something quite strange. Uh, Carvilius, and you hear these voices now, as the as those kind of more leaderly, you hear Carvilius and 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 Runa and Barabbas all starting to sort of call out to each other, making sure, can you hear me? Yes, I'm still here. You know, you can hear them slightly starting to, panic is too strong a word, but there's an awareness that something is off, something is odd. And and then the, the cloud continues, and it's minutes of climbing through this cloud, calling out to each other, concertinaing up more, 
It almost feels liquid now, the cloud on you. And go ahead, Radiant. Uh, I think we need to... Um... Our, our, literally our job here. Circle is, the wagons a little bit. Yeah, mm. I think mm-hmm. we need to. I think we need to kind of like group everyone together because this is. If it's been minutes now, this isn't passing. Mm-hmm. And if they're nervous about it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I think. Um, I'd say, Dolly, I think we need to do something about this. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I'm going to show it to these guys. I think we need to kind of form a, a protective circle, as it were. Uh, has anyone seen I? Where's I? <laughs> Just hear from from the from the mist and the cloud. You just hear, it's here. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan. Yeah. We have to gather everyone together. It's not safe. Right. I'll hold the front. Those of you who can surround the antique one. Cleric, stay in the centre. And they start to kind of bunch together. So, um, where are you? It's, it's hard to tell where you are, but where are you trying to position yourselves? We're both kind of Would we... behind Morgan, weren't we? Yes, we probably. So, if Morgan's at the very here. front, then yeah. you guys are kind of on the shoulders, if you like, yeah. the group left and right. And um, we're actually using, um, make the suggestion that we use Barabask's singing in order to locate where <laughs> it is. Great. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barabas, keep singing, keep singing! <laughs> Everyone move in the direction of Barabask singing! Oh, did come to the blessed land, Tantanara, Shantanara. Um, I'm going to have Morgan and, in fact, why doesn't everyone roll perception, please? Morgan rolled pretty good, if none of you guys did. Seven. Seven. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Five. Five. 14. Eleven. Eleven and 14. Okay, so, Dolly, you're further towards the back. You can just about see this, but certainly Morgan sees it, and definitely you see it, Kelnis. There is light through the clouds, but, like, the clouds are glowing gold, and then sort of um, watered purples and blues, greens, reds, amber, as it tries to push its way through this cloud coverage. And the longer you walk, the, the brighter it gets. You keep walking, Barabask still singing, everyone still <laughs> clustering together. <laughs> and then you break through the cloud cover and the world has changed. The pass has given way to a a flat plateau of blackened stone and twisting gnarled trees. And the only brightness is this storm of light in the sky. Amethysts and golds and whites and blues and greens and reds swirling and battling for the sky. And this is where we will bring in <gasps> a little set piece. Ooh. So let's Ooh. bring the stuff in. Oh my god. Okay, so you come through the cloud light. And oh as if by gosh. magic, we have our our minis here. This is So you come through the cloud line, um everybody roll me perception <gasps> checks <gasps> in this dark <gasps> blackened plateau. I got an at 20. And Yay! That's me. Okay. And Delian, you get a badge. <laughs> you hear something before you see it. It's a labored, snarling, a snapping, and you see. Wolves. Oh, oh. Wolves that are that are somehow corrupted. Oh. Their flesh oh, look at the skull. Yeah. eaten away, their bodies <laughs> blighted somehow. I'm gonna have to come round and oh I'm my afraid gosh, there's so many of them on two them. in a very inconvenient place for you all. But oh no. Oh. If They've these are on a large us. basis, so imagine that they are abreast on the pathway. Okay. okay. Um, and these six 
blighted wolves <coughs> uh, start to lope in from all sides. Immediately, uh, Morgan shouts, Protect the Antiqua! And you hear calls from the Antiqua pushing past you, hit Barabask. He stopped singing, he said, make way, make way! And they climb straight up on this rocky outcrop. The um, four of you and Morgan wrapping yourselves around it. Uh, and I still in the center of that throng who goes up onto the rocky outcrop with uh, the Antiqua. Everybody roll in this <laughs> Um, and I will call this, uh, I will call this, um, because it's easier. So, um, anyone get a 20 or higher? Endelian. Got a dirty 20. Yeah. Okay, so, Endelian. Yeah, me, me as well. Um, and a, and a, ooh, so what's your dexterity modifier? My, uh, dexterity oh. is, it's, is, oh wait, it's, it's, it's the same Or your initiative. Yes, yeah, yeah, plus, yeah, plus, plus four. Yeah. And what's yours, Endelian? My dexterity is plus two. Okay, so we'll go I first. Then in Delian. Uh, actually, I got a dirty 20 as well. Wow. So. What's your dexterity modifier? <laughs> Plus three. So okay, we're so we're going to go. Wow. wow. What a sandwich. <laughs> Dolly sandwich. Go I, then we'll go Dolly, then we'll go in Delian. Um, 15 to 19. I got a 15. A 15. Very okay. dirty, very filthy, um, <laughs> covered in mud. <laughs> Let me do that. And then we have Radian. And then Kelnis, what did you get? Nine. A nine. Okay, so if you let me just, if you'll please just let me uh, <laughs> write these last ones down. A nine me, for Kelnis, then, and then little Morgan. Okay. Okay. Glad. <laughs> okay. Wow. So there's this rush as you join the Antiqua up on this high rocky outcrop on this blackened platform. Are uh, you act first? No. Um, so, with the assumption that uh, these wolves are going to very rapidly move in and probably be within fifth, uh, within five feet of one of my allies, yeah. Uh, rather than waste my hide after, I'm going to. I would like to hide now using the uh, people around me to immediately fire <coughs> off. Uh, a shot with my light crossbow. Okay, so roll me a stealth check, yep. please. Uh, so that's a 16. A 16. Passes. Okay. So you are hidden. Yep. So I would like to uh, take a shot. You have one here, which yeah. is close to Morgan and to Endelian. Yeah. And then two further away here, another one that's very close to Morgan and Kelnis. And then you have two all the way back there, which I'm not sure exactly on the range of it. I would suggest it's probably it's probably 30 feet to the edge there. So I would say it's probably about 70 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe mm -hmm. let's call it 80 feet. I know I could. I have an 80 feet range. Great. So you could hit those back ones yeah. as well. So I guess it's the question of do I want to go for one that might be, we don't know the hit points, it might be, uh, you know, immediately about to attack Kelnis, or is it worth hitting one of these while they have got further to run? I think I am going to trust in. I think I is going to. I'm no, sorry. I'm sorry. I think I'm running into to. this all the time. <laughs> um, I think. I is going to trust <laughs> Kelnis and Morgan on this side, um, and is going to make a snap decision that Radian is looking pretty. Where's Indelian? Indelian is right I back here, yeah, just behind the outcome. Yeah, Radian she's, is. She's, she's within. Um, she's fifteen feet from um, from Morgan. Yeah. Okay. So Ra Radian's looking pretty bare over there. I'm. I is gonna. Take a shot at the that yes this, this one this here. one right so the here. furthest uh, the furthest one to, away to the uh, to the left hand side. Let's call him Graham. Let's call him. <laughs> let's give them all names. <laughs> Graham. Okay, Graham. so could you make a make an attack, and you can make that attack with advantage from hidden. I yeah. Believe. Yes. Uh, well, it's a thirteen proficiency with the crossbow, uh, so fifteen. Fifteen. So you rolled a thirteen on the die. Yeah. Okay, so that would be, it would be higher than that because your proficiency bonus is yeah. plus two, which is a 15, yeah. but then you'd also add your dexterity modifier, which oh. is a plus three. I think you have a plus five to hit with your crossbow? Uh, or is yeah. it a plus Sorry. six? Crossbow, it is a... 
Proficient, yes. So if you go into actions, it will yeah, say... Yeah, right. Oh, plus six. Yeah. Plus six. So that wonderful. becomes an 18. Okay, wonderful. Right? Is that, yep. Or does it become a... It's great. Is it a 12 year old or a 13? I rolled a 13. Yeah. Okay, so it becomes a 19. Okay, great, great, great. A 19. Great, great. So it's just the plus six. Hits. So you fire a single crossbow bolt mm-hmm. into this blighted. Yep. Um, this, this blighted wolf. So it's uh, obviously with stealth. So let's, so let's do your damage on that yep. first. So yep. that I think is, is that 1d8? It's 1d8 plus 4. Plus 4. Yeah. So uh, that's a 5, so that's 9. 9 damage. And uh, then so let me do 2d6. Go on, I. That's a five. That's a six. Wow. Okay. You thud a bolt into this, into this creature, and it it sort of snarls and snaps as it hits it in the flank. And there's a second where it looks as if it's going to kind of drop, but then the 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 shoulder now appears to be d- dislocated, and yet it's still snarling and snapping. This 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 one foreleg almost hanging loose underneath the weight of its body. Uh, that is Dolly's turn. Um, okay, well, uh, I think I'm gonna also go for Graham. I think he's probably the closest to me, um, ish. Um, and I'm going to, uh, cast, uh, Dissonant Whispers, and we'll be like, no, it's not the time. Um, (laughs) (laughs) and, uh, that (laughs) is, um, a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Not now, Graham. Uh, (laughs) That's a 13 on the die becomes a 14. Yeah, that's a f- um, that's a well, it it, it succeeds. Okay, it passes. Um, so that's half damage. Okay. Um, so that would be two d six, um, and it doesn't have to move away from me. Ooh, ten. Ten. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's uh, it's not looking good, but it's still looking up. Oh, and then um, I'm gonna. Uh, Lean back at Dan Dalian and be like, uh, "This is all because you wanted a little bit more action, so you better make it good and cast Bardic Inspiration." Yes. So, can you explain how that Bardic Inspiration works? Yeah. So now Bardic Inspiration means that I've just I've just inspired you uh, into this battle, and um, you can now uh, add a D6 uh, to um, attack uh, skill check. Well, it'll probably be an attack um, rule, but um, or saving throw or a saving throw as well. Um, once the die is rolled, but before you know the outcome, so you know it's kind of like on a feel it out basis. Mm-hmm. You got this. So you have bardic inspiration, and it is your turn, Indelian. You are back here. Yeah. So this is Graham, right? Uh, Graham is here. Yeah. Is so this, uh, that, that's <laughs> that's actually kind of too far for me, anyway. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go for the one that's closest to me. So you'd like to move into that one that's closest to you. Yeah. So that's. Peter. Very easy to do. Peter. Ten feet of movement, and you move, and you're all up in this wolf's business. I'm all up, and so it's Peter from a cat. I'm, we're, I'm obviously <laughs> going to try and hit for, with okay. a short sword. Okay, so make an attack. So uh, d20 roll of well, that's a 19 with my strength. Amazing, right? That super hits. Super hits. Super hits. Cool. So short sword for me is uh, d6 plus four. It's six, so hit for ten. Ten damage. Uh, okay, so the, this this you slash again in, across the kind of muzzle, this leering muzzle of this of this uh, wolf that's up on its hind legs, ready to sort of pounce at you, um, and you carve this deep gash from ear to the edge of its jawbone, and you see that the the flesh sort of like opens. It's it's like and it's and within it you see it's it's festering. It's all, it's like it's darkened. It's like it's 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 unnatural in some way. And let's try and go this way. Okay, roll an attack with your dagger. Let's go. Let's go. So my d twenty, I that's a twenty four. Yeah, I mean that that also does hit. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Thank all. you. Uh, so uh, <laughs> my, my dagger is a d four plus five piercing. D four in these nails. <laughs> Cocked. That's a four. That's a four. That is wow. Uh, four plus five. It's I hit it for nine. Nine, nine damage. Is. Okay. Wow. So this thing uh, looks like it's been. Peter. It looks like it's been in a fight. As you slash with your sword, you then <clears throat> in the dagger, and, and again it goes through like the the other cheek, and you feel the flesh give way. It's almost unnaturally soft. It's like Ooh. it's not like moving. It's like there's no muscle, no resistance. It's just something that's kind of rotting, festering from the inside. Um, that is the wolves at the back's turn, unless there is anything else you would like to do with your turn. No, I only get one shot. 
Yeah. Uh, an action surging, and I'm not exactly overwhelmed at the moment. So, okay. no, let's leave that. Cool. Mm. Oh, we wasted up. Because I'm going to move the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Can I move? Is it uh, easier? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, bro, uh, maybe. I'm going to say that they can get... Oh, God. Right, I am actually going to climb on the table. Woo! This yeah! Is great. Yeah! This is great content. Welcome to the Coyote so Ugly. I'm gonna <laughs> so I'm going to say... Don't fight imagine the moonlight. That those, this is just an issue with the size of the bases, but imagine, if They're... you would, that those two wolves are side oh, by wow. side. Um, <laughs> She's... Uh, and that <laughs> is... Oh, no, you know what? Yeah, they've got 50 feet of movement speed. Mm. They can do something far more fiendish. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Dolly. Oh god. Dead dead. They're gonna dash and they're gonna flank you. Oh god. These are intelligent creatures, despite their oh, horror. Okay. Oh no. So they are they are gonna be within five feet of you. Oh, that no. is their whole you, movement. You are, that is their whole you are turn. Not the tankiest of, no, I'm um, not. Okay. Uh, that is Radian's turn. Um <laughs> Watch this. I uh, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm thinking I can do I can do two things here. Um, I get rid of Graham. Mm. Oh, Graham. <laughs> Sweet uh, Graham. Or I just feel I feel like Dolly's about Sweet to get Graham. hit hard. I mm. it. Um, I would like to cast. Uh, how close are they to? Dolly, they're like right. They are literally in Dolly's really? space. They are within five feet of her. And so I ask this of you. Yes. Um, I ask this of you, sir. If I was to fire off, um, if I was to fire off web. Yes. Would that restrain their? Um, oh, here's what you can do. With these, oh. these measure radiuses, Great. and and what you can try and do is Radius position radiuses. it in such a way where it doesn't affect squares, the square that Dolly is on. Yes. These are larger creatures, so they are taking up more spaces, which actually helps you in this case. Okay. Um, what is it that you would like to do, and what is the radius of web? Uh, web is a 20-foot cube. A 20-foot cube. So here's a 20-foot cube, this larger. Mm -hmm. So you could place it there. Yeah, pretty much. And that very comfortably doesn't hit Dolly. We yeah. love to see it. We um, <sighs> love to see it. Thank you for buying this evening. <laughs> 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 Thought it might be handy. Oh, who knew? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to fire off. I'm going to fire off a sweet, sweet web. Okay. Um, so what do they have to do? Uh, Read us the spell. They must take a dexterity saving throw. Mm -hmm. uh, so on a failed save, it is restrained <laughs> as long as it remains in the web or until it breaks free. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to do the one further over to this side towards Calvin's side uh, first. When I do I, am I allowed to say, um, watch this now? Oh, you're allowed to say, watch this at any point. I turn around to Dolly, and I show her my, I show her my daisy chain. Aww. Go, watch this. <laughs> the first one rolls a, it's a dexterity saving throw. Mm -hmm. The first one rolls an eight, which becomes a ten, and the next one rolls a four, which becomes a six. What's your spell save, DC? Uh, Thirteen. So they both oh, fail. Yes. Hell yeah. So <laughs> they are both now restrained. And that means their speed becomes zero. It can't um, take opportunity attacks if you leave its space. Um, oh, actually, it doesn't mean that. It can't. Oh, its it. speed becomes zero. Attacks against them have advantage, so you would roll twice and take the highest. And attacks they make would have disadvantage, so they would roll twice and take the lowest. Um, and they have disadvantage on any dexterity saving throws or spells that require dexterity saving throws. That is. Graham's turn. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, hon. Okay. Oh, hon. He oh, moves in to Graham. Yeah. Graham, his, Graham, his eyes savage, his breath rank. Um, <laughs> rolls a 15. Silvery barbs. <laughs> yes! Okay, so describe how Silvery Barbs works, So please. Silvery Barbs forces um, that I, it's, I'm using a momentary distraction, and I'm going, Graham! No, I don't say Graham. <laughs> That's not canon. That's how it is. <laughs> okay. Glass cannon. Graham, dying boy. Um, <laughs> and that, that we use that disadvantage or to create disadvantage for Graham. Um, and um, I'd be like, you got this, and give the advantage to Radian on his next turn. So Radian gets advantage on his next turn, and Graham has to reroll his attack. Right? Yes, that's correct, sorry. <clears throat> and take the lure. He rolled a nine, which misses. I'm assuming what's your AC? Um, what is my AC? Someone Top uh, of your uh, 13. 13, okay, so you see Graham 
rushes in, rears up on his hind legs, and he goes to bite you, to, to sink his teeth into your exposed neck, your bronzed skin with these scars that have riven across it. And at the last moment, it's almost like he twists and jerks and falls off to one side, is somehow off balance. His head snaps towards Dolly, snaps back to you, he seems confused, and that is his turn. And he says, not today. <laughs> um, a beautiful I'm gonna say in that moment, with like literally Radiant turning around and going boom, and then Dolly turning around and going boom. boom. That is so good. That is this other wolf? I tell you what, both Endelian. Oh, could he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna go for Morgan. Um, he's gonna rush towards Morgan and attack. That is a 16 plus 5 to hit. So he sinks his teeth into Morgan for ooh, um, 8 damage. Ooh. Um, and then you watch as, as the bite takes hold. Oh, no. uh, you see this black, almost like an ichor this manifestation of whatever has corrupted the flesh of these creatures pours into Morgan, and you hear him like cry out in agony, and he also takes two points of necrotic damage. Oh, okay. So he takes 10 damage total. Um, that is Kelnis's turn. Okay. <clears throat> I have a plan, if I'm allowed to do it. Please, I love can plans. I, so, it, I can move and I can attack, and yes. can I do a bonus action as well? Yes, as long as that bonus action is something that requires a bonus action. So, for yeah. example, certain spells only take a bonus action. Um, so I'd have to know what it was you wanted to do in the entire turn. Okay, what I want to do... Where does it tell you if it's if a, if a spell can be a bonus action? Uh, tell me what the, you want to try and bark cast. Bark skin. You want to cast bark skin? Yeah, but not on me. Okay. And what else do you want to do in the turn? I want to move to Dolly. Yep. It's it, it, bark skin is touch. Yep. Um, so I want to cast bark skin on Dolly. Yes. And then I want to call my wildfire spirit. Okay. So read me out your wildfire spirit. What it says about um, how to summon your wildfire spirit. So wildfire spirit is part of your um, it's a bonus your action. Wild shape. It's a bonus action, so perfect. You can absolutely do that. So, yeah. are you okay for me to move you? Uh, your mini, obviously, rather than you. Mm -hmm. um, I am moved! You'd like to, I've moved you since the very beginning. <laughs> um, so, Kelnis moves over here, mm -hmm. touches Dolly and casts Bark Skin on her. Yes. Can you describe what it, can you read what it says on the card? What it means her? is that um, Dolly's AC can't be less than 16. Oh, nice. Wow. Nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. One action, you touch a willing creature, it lasts up to one hour. Now, it has, it requires concentration. And concentration basically means that you, you can't cast any other spells that require concentration. And if you take damage, you have to roll a special Lil saving throw to make sure that that spell doesn't drop. So you are over here, Cal, and you are Look concentrating. At that. Yes, We've you got are. props. We've got <laughs> props. Um, marvelous. Thanks, Cal. And then, as a bonus action, you'd like to summon your wildfire spirit. Yes, I'm just checking to make sure it doesn't require concentration. I don't believe it will if it's a wild think it shape. Does. It's wild shape is a kind of it's a very I don't think it takes a wild shape slot either. Um, no, it doesn't it shouldn't. say it. it's a certain it's as a, an action it's you being, yeah. Ah, okay. Starting it, um, at second level you consume a primal spirit bound to your soul. As an action, you can expend one use of your wild shape feature. So it's not a bonus action, I'm afraid it is an action. Oh, it's, it's under so, bonus actions in my thing. Okay, I'm not sure what Maybe to tell happen. you. Okay, um, uh, I'll do something else then. Can I do something else? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, I will uh, cast as a cantrip, and I can cast this as well, cast Shillelagh on my staff. Can you do a bonus action cantrip? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, cool, you cast Shillelagh on your staff. Um, 
describe what that does for, for, the, for the folks at home? For the folks at home, Shillelagh, um, it, I, you can only cast it on a wooden weapon. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wood of a club or quarterstaff you are holding is imbued with nature's power. The duration, you can use your spellcasting ability instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls of melee attacks using that weapon, and the weapon's damage die becomes a d8. Uh, the weapon also becomes magical if it isn't already. The spell ends if you cast it again or if you let go of the weapon. Brilliant. And it's not a concentration spell, it doesn't say concentration. It's not a concentration. Either. Fantastic. So, uh, that is your turn, which brings us round to these wolves over here. Okay. One of which is going to attack Indelian because you have really frustrated it mm. so far. You've made its day worse. That is an 18 on the die. Sorry, an eight, sorry, a 13 on the die with a plus five becomes an 18 to hit. Oof. Um, I've got armor class 14, okay. so yeah. So it bites into you for seven damage. Cool. And you see that it, um, just as you saw on Morgan, this black, viscous ichor comes out of it for another four damage. Okay. So that's 11 damage total. Um, then this other, this other wolf is gonna come in and attack Morgan, and using an, something they have called pack tactics, they're gonna get advantage in, on that roll, because they have an ally within five mm-hmm. feet. So they're gonna roll twice and take the highest. That's a 14 to hit, which doesn't hit. Um, that's a, an 18, which just hits. Um, Morgan is it's kind of blindsided by this, by this wolf. He's just dealing with the one that's done that damage to him. And they're attacking on his shield side, but he can't quite get the shield round in time. And oh, I ro- I'm rolling so well on this damage. <laughs> That's another eight damage to Morgan Ooh. from the bite. And I've rolled, I haven't rolled lower than a five on a d6 <coughs> on all of these attacks. Great. Um, so that is another 13 <gasps> damage to Morgan. How's it um, looking? Morgan is looking pretty bad. Okay. Really quite okay. bad. Okay. You okay. see that there's a second <laughs> as this other wolf bites into him, avoiding the shield and the spikes on his shoulders, that his 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 strength seems to leave him for a moment. Um that is his turn, and he is going to bonus action, second wind. He is a multi-class paladin um, Come on. one level of fighter. Let's go. So, He's going to use his second wind as a bonus action to get 1d10 plus 1, and he rolled a 9, so he gets 10 HP back. Um, so he's now looking a little bit more healthy, um, and he is going to... Uh, 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 he is going to attack with his longsword, the one that just did the damage to him. Uh, he rolls a nat 1. So, oh, good God, Morgan. Um, it's <laughs> good God, Morgan, you fraud. Um, <laughs> Between this and the tree, trees. I'm, the, <laughs> pretty sure you can't do anything at this point. He has this um, uh, this this moment when he, you see kind of life flood back into him, and he's already started that swing with his longsword towards this wolf, and it's almost like the new kind of vigor that runs through his body causes him to overshoot. He sort of swings round, clatters his longsword into the rock. Um, and that is, I mean, he could try and leave. He'd take two opportunity attacks and he'd leave in Delian, and I don't think he'd do that. So he's going to stay there and he's, he's going to fight. Um, that is, that is back round. To, well, at the, at the end of this, the, the, the Antiqua have seen what's happening and i you're aware of like arguments breaking out among the antiqua on that on that rocky outcrop um and gronoth is turning up to those around him and and going we have to do something we have to do something and you hear Barabask's voice saying that, that this is the task that they were set. Gronos says, they, they, their task was not to die on the slopes of the mountain. And this argument is continuing as we get to initiative 20 uh, at the top of the next round. And the wolves are going to attempt to do something. I'm going to have them roll a, a luck check, essentially. They all kind of lean back and give this 
guttural howl Ooh, if yes. they roll over a 10. They rolled a 7, okay. So their damage die changes if that howl is successful, it goes up. <laughs> um, it, it, that does not happen on this round. So it, we are back round to I. Yep. You are no longer hidden, you yep. are within the melee. Yep. Um, two questions for you. One, if I were to drop off that highest point yep. down, any fall damage from that height? Uh, I think I would say it's probably t- looking at it. If Morgan is maybe six and a half foot tall, I would say it's probably ten feet, um, and I think that would be one d six. But I will just make sure. Yeah, one d six bludgeoning okay. damage per ten feet fallen. Okay. Um, Graham's looking good. If I were to <laughs> wait, you're let it, no, you're, this is not the that's not an initiative works, darling. Uh, if I were to <laughs> um, attack, want to come forward to attack in melee. Yeah. One of these webbed wolves. Yes. Getting that close, do I become webbed, or am I able to remain no, out of? No, I, I don't believe web continues to ensnare after it's been cast. Okay. Yeah. So, in that case, I would like to rush forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I rush forward, um, I say to what's name? Gornoff. 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 I, s- I run past and I say, um, do something, do nothing. It does not matter to I. And I, and I, and Don't I. challenge him to do nothing. <laughs> and I, and I change to my, I whip up my two daggers, which yep. are finesse, yep. which means as they're within five feet, not only do I, um, not only do I get sneak attack because yep. they're within five feet, but also I have a bonus action um, with this finesse weapon, which is two weapon fighting, which would be um, uh, another, another attack. Yeah, another, another attack. attack with my Are dagger. you happy to move to this one that I've put yes. you towards, the one closest to you? Oh, yes. Right, okay. So you have advantage on the roll anyway because those yep. creatures are restrained. So Okay. So that's, uh, I mean, a 19, okay, so it's a 25. Brilliant. So then let's roll... If you'd like to bonus action, let's roll both of those attacks with advantage for your two daggers. Okay. Yeah. Um, daggers are. Do, 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 so are you, have you, did you take a two weapon fighting fighting style? Uh, yeah, I've got it as my bonus action. Okay, so yeah. I think you will you will not add your proficiency bonus to this second one. That's okay. what I believe two weapon fighting. Two weapon, yeah, so two weapon two fighting weapon. is no proficiency bonus on yes. the second act. Yes. Second yes. Only on so the you now roll twice and add just your dexterity modifier, not your proficiency bonus. So normally you'd add plus six so to roll. Plus four. Plus four. Yeah. So roll with advantage. Two. No, so roll oh, so with so let's, yeah. let's just do both the attacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so five plus four, so we've got a nine. Nine. And then a twenty. Dirty. A dirty twenty, okay. So you hit twice. Yep. Uh, one of which you uh, in fact, they're both the same, aren't they, at this point? Yeah. One. One plus four. This. Plus four, so yeah, five. five. Yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. So six. six. So 11 damage. Yep. Yeah. And then sneak attack. Sneak attack, baby. Go on. Yeah. Go, Go on. on. Go on. Yes, come on. Two. Six. Okay. So that was that a two and a six, or a cumulative two and then a six? Oh, sorry, it was eight. It was a cumulative okay, eight. So eight. So that's 19 damage. Nice. Um, which that's does good. some serious damage to this one that's closest to you that is restrained. Mm-hmm. Um, that is Dolly's turn. Uh, Dolly's gonna... She's almost finding this funny how quickly the tables have turned. Uh, she's seeing... Uh, Kalanis has helped her out a little bit, so she's feeling a little bit more confident. She sees Eye running in. She's gonna draw herself up to her full height, um, put her hands out like this and go, Down, boys! But the, you almost don't hear the clap straight away. It's like, it's almost silent, and it just ripples out towards them, and she's casting Shatter on okay. both of those wolves in front Great. of her, which That's is cool. uh, a saving throw for them. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a... Uh, constitution. Yeah, it's constitution. Okay. So the first one rolls uh, a 10, which becomes a 12. But do they have disadvantage? Uh, they have disadvantage on dexterity mm. saving throws. Oh, so it's a 13 <laughs> they need to be. Okay, so the first one doesn't get it. The next one rolls a... An 11, which becomes a 13. Okay, so one passes, one fails. Okay, so uh, it is, um, it's 3d8 on a fail or half as much on a success. Okay, so so roll your 3d8 and then we'll halve it for... Uh, Okay, And I'm I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that the one that failed is the one that I has already done damage to. Thanks. (laughs) You got this. Got this. Uh, Uh, that is 11. 
11 um, damage. Yeah. So 11 damage to this one and then 5 damage mm-hmm. to the other. Okay, so that one is really quite hurt. That one is looking pretty much okay. And Delian. How long does Bardic Inspo last? You, you, you have it until you use it. I'm going to use it on this one only because I... See, see how you go first, because you might not need it. Okay. It, what, it, what it can't do is it can't get you a nat 20, so... And you can only use it on the d20 roll. Yeah, so I'm... So, but see, what you can do is, I before can... you declare that you want to use it, it's kind roll of like... and see if you think you're going to hit. Yeah. And it's I'll, like if, I'll you talk rolled, you through it. if you roll a 12 and you think, like, oh, well, if I got another 5, then yeah, happy days. Okay. Okay, well, I rolled, I rolled a seven. <laughs> seven plus? Uh, four, so I rolled an 11. Okay. Do you want to add it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you now roll a d6 and add that to the roll. Okay. Which is a five. Which becomes a 16, 16. which does hit. Yes. yes! <laughs> Goodness. Had a couple of 20s in a row and I was like, <laughs> Okay, right. So um, it's short sword. I want to take the one in front of me down yep. because yes. I need to get round to Morgan. Yeah, yeah. So, short sword for me is a d6 plus four, so it hits for eight. It hits for eight damage. Okay. Um, you have a bonus action attack if you want to take it. <laughs> so that didn't do enough. Uh, so I'm going to hit with my dagger as well then. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, 19. It hits. So then that's a d4 plus, plus five. five. Oh. Unless it was a four, it doesn't count. And it was a one, so it's a six. It hits a six. It's, it's, it's really badly hurt. It's badly, badly hurt. This oh thing, are you this time as you stab into it, you stab right into the roof of its mouth, and you hear like a whelp, like a, like a kind of a more. You, you're hearing a more animal so sound. Strong. You're hearing a less, a less necrotic aberrationy sound. You're starting to hear more of the animal beneath it. Okay, then I'm gonna action surge because mm-hmm. I want this thing down. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. That is a d12. Oh, a d12. So, no, 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 you were rolling the yeah. wrong die, so you're, you're unlikely to hit. So roll a d20. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's okay. Ah. That's totally okay. They look very they similar. They do look very similar. Okay, so that's a 9 plus a 4, so that for me would be a heave, uh, 13. Yeah, that hits just. Oh, thank God. Okay, right, so that will be a d6 plus 4, which yeah, it hits for a 9. Okay. D- destroy it. <gasps> It is. Have you ever filled a balloon with paint? <laughs> it is like I have taken have my sword through this thing's stomach, and it is just that black liquid just comes straight on out. Yeah. It's all over my boots, it's all up my legs, but my God, that thing is on the floor. Yeah. Like those omelets that you just go. Yeah, it's omelet rice. It is kitschy omelet rice. It is done. So, what? So, this. this we, we, we wave goodbye to the oh. wolves. I see we've stopped giving them cute names these days. That's that, was, that, that was Peter. Peter. That, that was Peter. Peter. I'm so sorry. Oh, so we haven't named the one. No, yet. Um, <laughs> so what you can do is you still have movement and a bonus yeah. action. So you can still move and attack yeah. another wolf. I'm going to swing around to the one that's closest to, closest yeah. to me that's on Morgan. Yeah. And I'm going to try and just whack my dagger into that one okay, that's behind so me. Okay, so make an attack roll against. That. So that is a 15. A 15 yeah. hits. Yeah. So my dagger is a d4 plus five. Plus five. I have six, seven. Seven down. Seven. Okay. Um, I can still take a bonus action, can't I? I thought the bonus action was your second. Bonus action is sec- is action surge. So right? action surge for me is under special. Okay. Let me just see if it's a bonus action or if it's just she has an ability. She has two weapon fighting, doesn't she? Yes, but that's not. Yeah, that's, that's, all, just, that's nothing. That's not necessarily relevant to this. Particular moment. Oh. Um, uh, you you have a so is your action split as a? Let me just read this. Uh, you you make your second attack is your bonus action. Fine. As I understand it. <laughs> um, so you've taken an action to attack. Yeah, a no. bonus action to attack. You've used second wind. You've taken an action to attack. Movement and then a bonus to attack. So bonus action to attack. So that is everything. Then I'm done. Stop! It's already done. Stop. 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 I, w- I was going to try and second wind because I took I took a pretty mean hit, hit earlier. Ah, yes, of course. So I was actually going to try and save uh, yourself. Save. I was actually going to try and save myself. <laughs> um, sure. But yeah. Okay. So that is um, these wolves at the back. The first one is going to snap at. Um, let's snap at eye. Eyes come over and. St- Stuck a, stuck a thingy into it. He has disadvantage, so 
He rolled a 10, which becomes a 15, and a 15, which becomes a 20. So 10 becomes 15. I have an AC 15. You have an AC of 15, okay. Can I ask so, a question? Yes. Of these, of these these walls here, sorry to keep bringing up web. It says at the beginning of each turn it has to take a deck saving throw. Oh, you didn't tell me that? Oh, sorry. Um, Each creature that's in the web at the beginning has to take a dexterity saving at throw. At the beginning of their turn? or Each when... creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them during its turn must take a deck saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is restrained as long as it remains in the web or until it breaks free. So my interpretation so, so, of that... But, but it's, so it's already in the web? Yes, but at the, at the beginning of each turn, it will then have to continue taking that dexterity saving throw. Okay, so... Am I... Am I... No, no I, I mean, I think... Yeah, I think it's less advantageous to you, your version, than Is my it? ruling. Yeah, because I was just saying they were still restrained. It's okay. trying to break free. But, yeah. but, but, but I guess it can try... Let's, let's say it, it's rather than doing that... That's fair enough. We'll retcon that. And so that 15... Apologies. I, I, no, 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 no. Don't um, make it worse. So how, do I, how, does it, how does it mechanically break free? So I imagine that what it's doing, it's... it's does um, it say on the card how it can try to break free? Um, or does it just say it uses just, its action to break no, free? No, it just says each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them during its turn must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. So I'm going to say it has to beat your spell save in order to break free. Yeah. And it's used its action, and it's rolled a 15 to do that. Yeah. Uh, actually, its strength save... Yeah, its strength save is... Would would be a... Actually, no, it would be a 13, because it doesn't have proficiency in strength saving throws. Mm -hmm. So it's a 13 to attempt to break free of... Yeah, this. my spell save DC is 13. Okay, so it's used its action, but it's now free of restraint. That's its turn. Why have you done this? Uh, They're going to be dead. The, the next one is going to do the same thing. Uh, uh, and rolls a 6, which becomes a 9. So that remains restrained. Uh, and that is its turn. Okay. It seems odd to me that it points out that it can it attacks with disadvantage and yet there seems to be no mechanic for it to attack without re-rolling a saving throw. I was but we'll 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 move on with that to, as we are for now. So bring it up is it that sorry to um investigate it, but would it be that they do that and then they're able to do their turn afterwards? So they do the, the saving I assume that That's it would be they do the um saving throw and then if they're able to be free of that then they can take their turn. If not then they're restrained. Okay, sure. So in that case we'll say it takes an attack Mm. Am I being? Am I being crazy? I don't. Want I don't to think you're me. being. I don't think you're being crazy. I think you're. It's it's totally fine. You're making it harder Why for are you. you. Doing this? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sort of. I'm sort of. I'm sort of ruling in a in a slightly more. Um, I'm ruling in a slightly more lenient way for the party. Sorry, but that's fine. Um, so in that case, it's going to take an attack at you, um, mm. and it's going to do so with advantage because yep. it has an ally yep. within five feet. Um, Even though the ally is, 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 the ally is not incapacitated. <laughs> ah. um, so that's a dirty 20. Well, great. Oof. Cool. Um, that is, uh, oh, it rolled a one on the damage. So that's a three, three piercing damage and uh, two necrotic damage. Uh, and that is its turn. And then the second one will attack Dolly, this time with disadvantage. It rolled a 13, which becomes an 18, and a 15, which becomes a dirty 20. Hellish rebuke. Okay, how does that work? Uh, so, uh, the creature that damaged me is momentarily surrounded by flames. Uh, the creature must make a dex saving throw, and it's uh, 2d10 fire damage on a failed or half as much on a, on a successful. Sure, so I need to roll its damage first, yeah. uh, which is uh, 4 piercing and 5 necrotic, so <laughs> 9 damage total. Oh god. Uh, and now it has to roll a dex save or take 2d10, did you That's say? That's right. Its deck save is uh, an 11. It's a fail. Okay. <laughs> I love your chocolate yeah. box. Yeah, no, it's, 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 like, it's like it's a tin it's, of quality like, street. You know what it reminds me of? The Trunchbull's sweets. Yep. Yes. 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 of chocolates and Matilda. It just makes things really hard to find. I gave find. you a wrong number earlier. It's 24 hit points for me, not 22. Okay. So I'm, I'm down to 19 now. Okay. I apologize that I've made everything harder for everyone, but also, isn't it fun? <laughs> it is, yeah, uh, it is for everyone. Loving life. Yeah, so that All is... the lack thereof. <coughs> 17. 17 damage. Well, okay, that's quite a lot of damage. Yeah. It's still up, but it's looked better. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, Radian, that is your turn. Um, because of my proximity, <laughs> because of the proximity that I am to that um, wolf there. Graham. Yep. Uh, sorry, to Graham. Graham. Um, Graham. Would my spells take do less damage? 
Uh, so when you aim a ranged attack at an opponent that is within five feet of you, mm-hmm. you have disadvantage <coughs> on that attack roll. So you would have disadvantage on a spell attack. But if you wanted to cast, for example, Chromatic Orb, which yeah. requires you to roll, yeah. you'd have disadvantage. If you wanted to roll something which would make it do a saving throw, it's unaffected. And right. you can also turn around and attack any of the others without... Yeah. Um, without taking movement, yeah. provoking opportunity attack, or having disadvantage on that roll. Okay. I'm going to cast um, Magic Missile at level two. Okay. Um, which means uh, I create th- four, four yeah. glowing darts of magical force. Each dart hits a creature of my choice that I can see within range. A dart deals 1d4 plus 1 force damage to its target. Okay. The darts all strike simultaneously and you can direct them to hit one creature or several. Okay. So... Can I choose... Can I roll... Can I... Do I choose who I want to hit first and then roll it? Uh, you don't need... Yeah, you don't need to roll any... You don't need to roll an attack, so you just tell me which creatures these four darts affect. Whether you stack it all or go for Yeah, whether you stack yeah. or whether you... I'm a, bit they, like, I'm a bit like Graham's been around for too long and he sees... <laughs> like, these things are damage sponges. He's loitering over me like that's crazy. And I feel like you guys can can get rid of those. There, you've got three on. You're fine. Maybe. Mm. Okay. There are three of us. Yeah. yeah, we're fine. Well, maybe, you know, then I'm thinking I you've taken... You've taken your turn, haven't point. you? Mm-hmm. You've taken your turn. Yeah. You've taken your How turn. I got back there. I got two of they. So you've got two and you've got Morgan. So, no, I haven't got Morgan. I've got a boy scout with a bad arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to attack Graham. Okay. I'm going to attack Graham and I'm just going to I'm just with, gonna pummel Graham. With, with, all, with all four. How much damage did Graham take? I, I'm... I bet initially. Yes. Graham, Graham took some damage. Yeah, I, Graham I is a... I will say Graham is a long way from full health. I got I'll tell you what, roll, sure, roll an insight check. Maybe it was the first attack, wasn't it? I got a yeah. sneak got, attack, yeah. pretty hefty one. Uh, it'll be a 13. Okay, Graham, would, Graham is, is close to death. Okay, I'm going to put... Um, I'm, I'm Graham gonna, is close to death. <laughs> Graham's close to death, great. <laughs> I just don't want Graham to hit me. Sorry, um, Graham. <laughs> I'm going to put two I'm gonna put two into Graham. Okay. And then I'm going to put one, e- and then I'm going to put the other two into the really super weakened one. So you're going to put two into Graham and two into the weaker one around the front yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So roll one. So let's roll them for Graham first. So it's one d four plus one. Graham, I wish you dead. <laughs> uh, that's three plus. That's four. Okay. And four again. Okay. Uh, destroy him. Yes. Um, Yay! So Graham's been snarling at me for a while, um, and he's just kind of thrashing around. And um, <laughs> uh, basically, what happens is uh, Radian holds out his hands like this, and from his wrists, <laughs> 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 he just flicks them like that, and these two darts just go straight into this wolf's eyes, and the eyes just burst like that, <laughs> and his skull just breaks apart. And and like a bit <laughs> earlier, these things are just full of of pus and and, oh. and blood, and it just spatters all over his face. <laughs> and then he immediately turns around and does exactly the same thing and decides to fire on the next target. Okay. That's a two mm-hmm. and a five. Okay, so it becomes a seven. Mm-hmm. Destroy it. <gasps> yes. Yay. And immediately turns around and does exactly the same thing. And it hits them directly between the eyes like that. And the head explodes in the same way that it did before. This time, all over Dolly. Ugh. Watch <laughs> this. <laughs> um, and um, he kind of like, he looks at her because like with like the daisy chain exposed. <laughs> the daisy chain exposed and just kind of mouths, thank you. <laughs> so Thanks, I guess. It's such yeah. a beautiful <laughs> moment. I like the idea that in this moment, Dolly's taken all of it because she's right in front of um, Kelness. So Kelness is not, like, totally free because Dolly's taking it. And then the rest of it has just entirely gone over eyes. Just all the blood has gone over eyes head because he's so small. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly, meanwhile. Uh, okay. Oh, it stinks. This is, that makes it, oh, the wolf, this wolf's turn. And I'm afraid there's nothing for it but 
chowing down on Morgan some more because that gets advantage on the roll. Rolled a nat one, but rolled with advantage. It has a plus five to hit. Morgan's AC is 18. Rolls 17 on the die because oh, no. Morgan. Rolls a five plus two piercing and one necrotic. <gasps> so that's eight damage. He had at least 10 HP because he healed for yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But Morgan is the other one. very, very hurt. Yeah, we've got the name. Um, the and that is Kelness's turn. Okay, wh- wh- what's the little ring around my character? You are concentrating, so you cannot concentrating. you cannot cast another spell that says concentration mm-hmm. on it. And if you take damage, you have to roll a saving throw to maintain concentration on that spell. Okay, can I break can I break away from this little formation without um, inciting an attack of opportunity? Are you in its space? I would say not you're not within I'm its space. So actually, yeah. yes, you can. You can move freely. It's okay. a source of restraint, isn't it? Yes, but that doesn't mean it can't take opportunity attacks. Mm. You're a bit like, what if it's wet for? <laughs> well, it's made a, it made a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think then. <clears throat> I had a plan in mind, and that's changed. Uh, I just had that idea, and I just completely changed my idea. <laughs> Can I just say as well, I've just noticed that the like the terrain below the cloud cover is all lush. Yeah. And then as soon yeah. as it passes mm. through yeah. the yeah. it's such a good detail. Cover. So good. Yeah. No, I mean he's he's phenomenal. So good. So good. He's amazing. Absolutely stellar. Work. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do then is I'm I'm just gonna break away mm-hmm. about uh, I don't know, ten feet. Okay. Ten feet in which direction? Uh towards towards Morgan. Get off I. Get off. Get off I. Because I can, I can kind of see that that these three have this one wolf in front of them. Yeah, they can probably handle it. So I've and I've been hearing Morgan go. Yeah, <laughs> you can hear that Morgan is is royally. So royally. I turn around, I take a few steps, and I cast Scorching Ray at the wolf I can see in front of Morgan. Okay, so so this one on the extreme side yes. here. Yes. Okay. Looks like a straight line. Yep, absolutely. So how does Scorching Ray work, please, Doug? Okay. It uh, doesn't require concentration. Great. Uh, you create three rays of fire and hurl them at targets within range. You can hurl them at one target or several. Make a ranged spell attack for each ray. On a hit, the target takes 2d6 fire damage. Okay, so do you want to roll, do you want to attack the set one with all three, or do you want to split oh, them? hang on. When you cast a spell using a spell, oh, no, never mind, okay. Sorry. Would you like to attack just that one with the three, or would you like to split them much in the way that Radian did? Can I split it? Yes, From absolutely here it looks like you, you can. You can. Yeah. You can. You You've can got see both. Either side, side of Morgan. Okay, and also, so you asked to move ten feet. You got thirty feet of movement. If it requires you, yeah. you to move one thing. Would the ray pass through the wolf into Indelian though? Uh, no. No. Good. I don't believe so. Because I'm telling target. you, yeah. Fire. Yeah. 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 No. You've just grown your eyebrows. My eyebrows just come out. Please, the fire with this group. So, you'd like to do how many at which wolf? I'd like to do two at the wolf in front of Morgan and one yep. at the one in front of Indelia. Okay, so roll the two at the Morgan wolf first, please. Just roll them one after the other and then we can do the damage in a moment. It's called the Nancy and Patricia. Okay. Nancy and let's, Patricia. Let's, please, let <laughs> We must. If we simply must be Nancy and Patricia. Come on, Patty. Yeah. And then who, is this Nigel in front of us? That's Nigel. Okay. That's Nigel, yes. Yeah. So we've got Nancy Patricia That's so and Nigel. Nigel. Alrighty. Um, 17 plus 6, okay. that's got to be a hit. Very much hit. So that's one hit on that one. Stop suggesting. And a 9 plus 6, uh, 15. Hits. So two so, hits. Shall so I roll damage for that one? Let's do 4d6 for that one. Would you like some extra d6s? I've got oh, two. You've got two. I'll do, I'll just... Yeah, it's okay, you can roll them twice. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Yes. Moves ever closer. Come and put your hand so in So three hand damage hand. for one ray. And six for the other. Okay, so nine damage total. Uh, okay. Still up. Okay. And, and then, then one the for this ray. one near Endelian. Seven plus six, thirteen. Just hit. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the flesh is hanging off them. They're not hard to hit. It's five, hang on. five damage. Five damage. Okay. That one looks, still looks still looks pretty good. Um, Quite nervous. It's the one over here, and it's gonna do yep. 
what it needs to do, oh, no. which is attack Morgan <sighs> with advantage due to pack tactics. It rolled a 19 on its first oh, roll. No. So I'm going right. to see if it crits. I'm going to see if it crits. It doesn't. That is five piercing damage. Oh, my God. God. Damn it, Morgan. And three necrotic damage. You see Morgan drop. <gasps> mm. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We can... It's fine. And I mean, you hear... Um, you hear the... Antiqua suddenly up in arms. Grawnoth, at this point, just shouts, This is madness! And he is... I'm going to roll initiative for him and see if he rolls higher than the current... Uh, he rolled a nat 20. Um, so I'm going to bring Grawnoth in. And yes! I'm going to let him take an action now. Um, let me have a quick look at what he has. He has... Um, he is going to cast a mass healing word. Oh, hello. Oh. Um, it's a third level spell. It can pick six creatures of his choice that he can see within range to regain 1d4 plus five. He picks all of you and Morgan. <gasps> And he puts his hand out. And you see this moat of divine light. And then <laughs> suck back into his hand. And the spell fails. <gasps> and nothing happens. And the and the Antiqua at this point are panicking. They all start trying to cast oh, mass healing word. Every single one of them. Mass healing word, mass healing word. Motes of light, <laughs> suck back into the hand, <laughs> suck back into the hand, <laughs> suck oh, back shit. into the hand. There's an, there's, there seems to be something preventing this magic from taking effect. But what Gronoth is going to do is Gronoth is going to jump down off there and he is going to use all of his movement to put himself in the harm's way and get over towards the body on, of, uh, of Morgan. Um, that is Morgan's turn. Morgan is going to roll a death saving throw. Oh, not in that one. Not in that one. Ro Morgan rolls a four. That's one fail. At three fails, Morgan is oh is, is dead. Morgan is gone one. forever. Yeah. That is um, initiative twenty. The wolves are going to try and increase their damage die, and they rolled a nine. It's a ten and a half out. They would have got it. Um, what are you annoyed for? Who side you on? The, I'm on the side of the story. Um, the 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 Antiqua now are really panicking. I'm going to just roll for one more member of them. I'm going to roll. Yeah, Carvilius rolls a seven, so Carvilius will come in on initiative seven, which is here. And I'm going to roll for Muna, uh, Runa as well because she's yes, Runa. She Runa. Come on, Runa. Yes. Uh, Runa yeah. rolls a 14, so Runa's going to come in there. As, as, I, I, as, I, as, I, as I see, as I see Runa, obviously clearly go right. Squares are coming in. I just want to look over at her and go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, in this moment, like all of that, any level of like, and and, the, and like, there's you you see this warrior, you know, all that clumsiness that that insecurity that happened when she was trying to read, that's all gone. Yeah. She's got her bloodlust up now. Yeah. Um, that is I's turn. Yeah, okay, so we were saying, we obviously had a discussion about reloading bolts, saying it's a free action. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I have, I'm using a free action to change weapon, then it means that the bolt has to be a bonus action load, or? Uh, mate, it's cool. It's cool. Okay, cool. Do, if, do you, something if, you awesome. can, if you can do a Legolas style flick into the thing and, and, okay. and swing that thing up with one in the chamber already, I'm I'm happy for you. Great. I trust right now that between Dolly and Radiant, this dude is always taking damage. So what? <laughs> Dolly's like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm so like, oh, yeah, you you both get an option yeah, before attacking. Like, we'll yeah. get him. I would like to <laughs> yeah uh, move back to here. Yep. And Feel free if you can reach your little yeah. boy. He's a sweet boy. To he? here. Sweet boy. <laughs> and good boy, good boy. what I would like to <laughs> do is uh, take a shot with my crossbow at 
The one on the furthest yeah, edge. Yeah, the one on that far right hand side. Patty. Yeah. Patty. Uh, Patty, of course. Patty. Patty. Um, Me, Patricia. So that's an 11 bit plus 6. So that's uh, 17. Yes. Um, so it hits. So uh, um, 1d8 plus 4 is. That's a 5, so that's a 9. Mm hmm. 2d6 for my sneakiness. That's a 5. Goes up to an 11. <laughs> okay, so 11 damage total. Deadlift from the sneak attack, from yeah. Sneak attack plus your 9. Yeah. So 20 damage. Yeah. Okay. Yes! Go on. Yeah? Yeah, destroy it. So I runs like kind of behind this little mound thing and just using it steadies himself, uh, takes aim. And there is just that, it's that perfect moment. Again, the bolt just leaves silently, just whips through the air, and it goes right over the Dwarven Cleric's shoulder, mm -hmm. perfectly like over. Gronoth's shoulder. And Gronoth just sees, straight in, basically, the head, just like this. Yeah. Eyeball, <laughs> just straight through, one eyeball, other eyeball, Nothing perfectly. Than an eyeball. Like, a, like a little kebab of... <laughs> Uh, she, like she's going of, of eyeballs straight on through as this thing jaw down here just kind of stops where it is and just boom slumps slumps forward uh, and I would like to use my bonus action to hide spell check <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anyone to know I'm done <laughs> yes I'm appalled <laughs> genuinely embarrassed sorry Patty uh, that is a 19 19 passes you are gone you out of there baby that is Dolly's turn can I see uh, Gron uh, not Gronov uh, can I see Morgan from no. where I am no I don't think you can mm. no you can't dang it he needs board. help I need to I, no, I'm he's going down to... he's not oh sorry no. you're so yeah, right yeah, yeah. I do apologise but as in, I can, if I can cast Healing Word on him? Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Can you read me the language of Healing Word? So yeah, it's a bonus action. Um, uh, a creature of my choice that I can see within range. You regain, can't see him, I'm uh, Yeah, but can I move to see him? Yeah, yeah, absolutely you can. You'll take an opportunity attack. I know, but I think I need to because no one else can do it right now. Okay. Um, so you want to move? I want to move just so I can see him. Okay, which I think is probably like one, two, three, maybe here. Okay. Then you can see him. Yep. I mean, I'm going to say you can see through Cal. In fact, you can probably do it from there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there. So I'm just going to take, give, do a, do an attack of opportunity okay. on you as you leave. It will be a bite attack. Yeah. That yeah. is a natural four becomes a nine. <sighs> Misses. Misses. Okay. Ooh. So. Okay. So yeah. Um. Uh, he's going to regain hit points equal to one d four plus my spellcasting ability a modifier. Very good. Um. So I think you will. What is it? Uh, I roll that. Is it? Uh, no. No, it'd be you. 1d4 plus. Yeah, definitely you. Okay. All right, fine. Where's my spell? Oh, I mean, I mean, I can do it. Why, yeah, why, why, no, no. No, if you want to. I'm here. Sure. I might as well do something. My modifier is plus three. Uh, he, that's five. He gets five HP back. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, he loves that. Yeah, he loves <gasps> it. Love that <sighs> You hear him, like, kind of gasping for breath as he comes back up. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, no, that's a bonus action. Yes. No, as I understand it, you usually can't cast two spells in one uh, turn, but um, if one of them is a cantrip, yes. then I would like to cast Vicious Mockery yep. at um, the, the wolf that I just left, the okay. one that just tried to take a bite at me. Mm -hmm. My Vicious Mockery is um, it's a wisdom saving throw okay. for, for that. Uh, that is a nat one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it. Uh, I mean, it's not tons of damage, but it's one d four psychic damage, and it has disadvantage on its next attack roll. Fantastic! That's cool. Before the end of its turn, so I'm just gonna go. It's time we put you down. Um, that's a one, but okay. you know it was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a thought that counts. Yeah. Um, that is Endelian's turn. Um, I'm furious. We had one job, which was to protect the clerics. Morgan went down and caused such a commotion between us. The clerics have got off the damn rock. <laughs> like, we look... We look silly. We look ridiculous. Um, I think I've looked really cool. <laughs> 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 oh my God, this is certainly but something I'm, to watch. I'm, I'm gonna do what I do best, <laughs> so... This should be... I can't see because it's behind the rock, but this should be one up, right? Yeah, there is. Next There's one up Right, I'm you, just... Yeah. Th this one, I'm just... I'm swinging my short sword at it. Yep. So that is a dirty 20. Dirty 20 hits. So that's a d6 plus 4. It hits for 6. Great. 
And then I'm going <laughs> to dagger it as well. That is a 19. Yep, hits. Which is a d4 plus 5. Mm-hmm. Which is 5, 6, 7, 8. So that hits for 8. Okay. He's fine. Oh, good God! Can I can I bonus action at this okay. point? Yes, you can. Right, this I'm going to cast a uh, second wind on myself. Yeah, yeah, I'm agree. because I think you can. I'm going to say you can, and I'll have a look into it in between. This and all it says for me is once per so you can bonus action yeah. to regain one d10 yeah. plus three. Great. So you d10 look like a spinning top. Like. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, that is eight plus three, so I regain twelve. You regain eleven. Eleven, sorry. It's all right. Yeah. Regain 30. Uh, <laughs> so I'm on 23 right now. Okay. Radiant, that's your turn. Radiant looks towards this little boy. Yep. And he goes, it's just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> and he casts... <laughs> watch this. Watch this. <laughs> hey, <laughs> watching. Are you going to show your um, daisy chain first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See this? <laughs> this is for my best girl. <laughs> uh, um, it's not Patty. I, I fire chromat- chromatic orb. Yes. Um, yep. Sure you do. We'll find out. Uh, it's 15. 15 hits. Um, and you're doing this at first level? First level, yep. I have no two uh, second levels left. Uh, so that's 3d8. Yep. It's a two, a six, and a two. A two, a six, and a two is 10. Just about to oh. You see the what? What energy did you put into it? Fire. Fire. You see this fire thuds into it, and it starts to sort of lick across the fur, singeing. Is it still in the web? Because doesn't that do extra if it's? Oh. Uh, it broke free of the oh, web, it did. I believe. Yeah, 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 it did, didn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it's still in the area of the web, but it's not restrained yeah. by it. Um, you see it kind of lick across the flesh and fur of this creature, and its eyes momentarily close, and then they snap open, still kind of bright. Um, sponges. <laughs> they are sponges. Um, uh, okay, that is this wolf's turn. It's just seen. It's just seen Morgan go down. It's gonna go from again. It rolls. Oh it rolls a twenty-four. I mean, it's like it's 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 <laughs> at this point. It's kind of in. It's it's in this kind of blood frenzy. It's just, it's seen its prey, it's decided who its quarry is. At least it's not me. Um, that's far, okay, he's down. He's down again, that's fine. Even without the necrotic, you see Morgan drop again. Um, I, have, I have one more, I have um, one more spell slot left. Uh, that is, uh, that is Kelness's turn. Okay. Um. I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on Morgan. You have to do that by touch, I believe. Oh, by touch. Which is fine, you can get That's over fine. there. That's fine. Rest in, rest in. can do that. Yeah, so I'll cross over to Morgan, and I'll cast Cure Wounds on him, and it's 1d8 one d- one d- plus 4. Come on. Okay. You uh, can do this. My d- no concentration, That's so done. you're fine. Where's my d8? 1d8 plus 4. Oh, there it is. I'm going to say Grawnoth moves out of the way to allow you to get in. Oh, Grawnoth actually should have taken a turn, so Grawnoth will act just after you. Nine. Nine. Nice. Okay. Well done. Morgan again. Morgan <gasps> <laughs> is really going through it at the moment. Oh, God. Um, He's going to have a hell of a headache. Yeah, it really is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Um, Good thing you got these flyers. At this point, at this point, Gronoff <laughs> is is all in and just. He has this sort of mace, this sort of round headed mace that he's just going to slam into this creature. It's a. Uh, yeah, it's a 22 to hit. Um, <laughs> he's swinging it two-handed, so he'll roll a d10. He's going to steal on. your kill. Pardon? Yeah, he's going to steal your <laughs> kill. Yeah, 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 exactly. I've, That's all I want. It's like I've been feeding a slot guys. machine in Vegas, and <laughs> so I just stepped yeah. away. Yeah, that is, um, uh, 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 that is nine damage. This thing's looking hurt. This it's thing's still looking hurt. up. Yeah, it's still up. You didn't attack it for a re- mm, no one attacked no, it for I a didn't. really long time. Didn't attack it until your bonus action up yeah, until, until the first one, and then, the dagger. and then Morgan's been caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, that Different is energy. Runa's turn. Go on, Runa. Go on, Runa. Go on, Runa. Runa's go on, Runa. gonna go down there and take a swing 
And again, she just muscles bulging in her arms is going to take a hit. She rolls an out one. She rolls an out one. She's very emotional. It's been an emotional day. I, got, I, got, I, did, get that. I whole, did get that vibe she, from her. Yeah. Public speaking, yeah. Yeah. can mess with your it's head. It's a tough day. Um, you know, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Um, uh, a and then Carvilius is also going to run it. Right, Carvilius does hit. Carvilius hits four. Four damage. <laughs> really good. This thing is very nearly dead and yet not definitely dead yet. Um, that is Morgan's turn. Morgan, Morgan, <laughs> Morgan looks at this wolf and goes, You piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he Go rolls. On, Morgan. Go on, Morgan. He rolls his longsword. Let me see what he has. There's a plus to his longsword. He has a plus five to hit. He rolls a three, which becomes an eight. Morgan is, like, Morgan has died twice. Like, Morgan has had a rough morning. How did he make a sergeant? He's more powerful than all of you. Um, uh, He he swings. um, It doesn't, it doesn't happen. He is going to... His arms have been mangled. Yeah, he is, he's really, really in a mess. Um, That's his turn. Uh, that is I. Back round to the top of the order. Come on. I. Mm-hmm. Um, so from my stealthy position, yep. I would like to get a shot off on. I mean, do I go for? Do I? I mean, I've got a sight. You can see. Here. You can see. Yeah. Um, I'm, this one's low. I think I'm just going to go for uh, the stealth okay. shot on yes. the one by Morgan. Yeah. Um, okay. Go on. Uh, so that is uh, an 18 hits. Okay. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, hits for uh, six. Okay. And then with the stealth. With your sneak attack. Yeah, sneak attack, sorry. It's not stealth, it's sneak attack. Uh, four, ten okay. combined. Destroy it. Yeah! Okay, <laughs> um, and then so in this moment, I go, you! You! <laughs> to get Morgan's attention and goes, we all has off days. <laughs> and then I go, but not I. <laughs> Straight through, and uh, this goes, this bolt goes straight into the side, like the, the abdomen mm-hmm. of this beast, tears through it, and you just see the flesh just boom, in, in half as two ends of this wolf separate and both just crumple to the floor. Okay. <laughs> oh, this too, too sully And flesh. then I would like to, <laughs> once again, just go, I just want, once, now that Morgan's These looking at me. Just dropping now, now that Morgan's looking at me, I just disappear behind and the rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, and that is a, uh, no, that's that's greater. That's a 20, that's a 22. You know what it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's Dolly's turn. Um, okay, I am going to save one spell slot just in case. Um, and I'm just going to go, hey, ugly, um, and cast Vicious Mockery mm-hmm. at this last wolf, um, uh, which is um, Wisdom Saving Throw. Two on the die. That's, 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 a, a, that's a big old fail. It comes a three. Don't know if that changes things. <laughs> big old fail. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. This thing is so nearly dead. <laughs> Um, but it is still up. I'm so sorry to say it is still up. I love the idea of thinking turn around and go, hey, ugly. And it's just minorly offended, like, ow. Yeah. <laughs> and Delian, that is still. your turn. It was vicious, my <laughs> Can I try and move around so I can just get in range to try and longbow this thing? Yeah, you can get there. Do I get a line of sight? You get line of sight. Yeah, you get line of sight. Yeah, 25 feet and you've got line of sight. Right, just, just gonna try and... I will it. level with you if you hit. It's uh, it's over. I mean, I don't think I'm going to because I just rolled um, with my a strength, an eight. You know what? It's not over yet. Oh. Um, that is that is the wolf's uh, the back's turn. No. No. He's gonna ha- take no. a chomp at um, take a chomp at Runa. We can't let it touch. Uh, the- it rolled a uh, a twelve to hit. Runa has a higher AC than that. Runa's got shield. 
Um, so I can't, someone here does. It, it misses. <laughs> um, but we allowed a wolf to take an attack. To be on fair, one now to be fair to Morgan, Morgan has an AC of eighteen. The wolves have just rolled. Yeah, they kept, really, they kept, really they've had really advantage well. almost every oh round. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they've had a good day in Vegas. Yeah. They've had a great. They've had a great time actually. Oh. Um, that is. Uh, Come on, Nigel. That is Radian's turn. Kill him. Kill him dead. Um, what we got? What we got? Do something, <laughs> Radian. <laughs> Do something. You got the opportunity to be really cool. We cast shield. Uh, yeah. I, cast, <laughs> I cast greater invisibility on myself. No, I'm, gonna cast, I'm gonna cast Firebolt. Um, <gasps> and I'm just gonna cast it. Make an attack. Oh my god. That was that was on its side. Do I need to do that? Or it'll be eleven. I'm afraid an eleven does not hit. <laughs> Wait. You saved that one spell slot, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. We now move to Kelness's turn. Come on, Kelness. Kelness, you do You're just about away. have line of sight. I have line of sight. Is I have thirty feet. Yep, so movement. You can move can as I well. move? Yeah, of course. To the to the wolf. Uh, you, you can you get there? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. I reckon you just about just can. Just hit it. Just hit it. Just about just, can. You little sore spot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm gonna run, and as I'm running. The staff is coming up, and I'm going to go whack. Okay, make an attack with your quarter staff. This will be phenomenal. So, and this because of Shillelagh, you need to use your wisdom modifier for the attack rather than your strength. So, wisdom. Roll, yeah, so roll a d20. Oh no, no, I think it's um, uh, it's spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your spell attack modifier. Is uh, wisdom. You use oh, wisdom okay. as your oh, yeah, as, yeah, yeah, as your yeah. casting okay, gotcha, thing. Gotcha, yeah. So it's plus your wisdom, which is six, yeah. plus your proficiency, which is two. So it's That's a, a natural. Oh yes! Oh, yes! 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 yes. 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 He has yes. one. Goodness. He has one HP. If you want to roll the damage, you can. If you just want to narrate how you would end this wolf, the last one. <laughs> I run up to it, I scream, you bastard! <laughs> and I swing and I hit it square on the top of the head and it just kind of crumples, it just <laughs> <laughs> And drops. And, and drops. there is a moment of, of, of quiet, of stillness. Um, everybody, roll me constitution saving throws. Oh my God. Um, <gasps> what did you get, Tolly? A natural one. A natural one, okay. Uh-oh. Uh, what did you get, Mike? Uh, 17. 17. What did you get? 14. Endelian? 8. <laughs> uh, Radian? 15. Okay. Okay, it's just for me to know. Oh, God. Um, there's this moment where the battle ends and the Antiqua that are still on the platform, all of them, whether it's whether it's Arbuthnot or Malachine or Barabask, they're all down there among you. They sudden they're in, they're trying to they're trying to, to cast healing spells. They're trying to do what they can to, to restore those of you who've been in the fight. And just as before, nothing's, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. What just happened? Isn't this, this isn't how this place is supposed to look, right? And, uh, I mean, Gronoth says, no, no, this has changed. Something has changed. And everyone roll me, everyone roll religion. No. I told you I don't like it. <laughs> no, no, sure. No. Uh, so it's, a, it's a dirty one. A dirty one, okay. <laughs> so you rolled a two on the die and yeah, got a minus one. Yeah, and I got a one. minus one, yeah. Uh, Kelnis? Uh, seven. Ready? Seven. Eight. I. Three. Three, okay. No, none of you can figure out what the hell is going on. Like this, <laughs> that you're like, let me roll Let me roll for Morgan. I mean, strange, I mean, strange things have happened. He has a minus one. I ain't been to church lately. <laughs> uh, Ever in my Morgan, case. Morgan, Morgan also can't fathom this. Um, and and then Gronoth says, "Without the divine, there is no divine magic." 
and they look at each other. And then as one, they start to bolt towards the back of the plateau, further up the pass. And they're sh- one of them, you hear a shout, you can't even tell who, someone shouts, the virtuous, and they're running. There's, they run across the plateau and then over a, a rise. And you see them scambling over this rise. What do you guys do? We got to follow, take off after them. Okay. Yeah, so on the job. Literally, all, literally so, squishy so clerics you're, everywhere. You're, you're all you're all coming over the top of this rise, and before you is this great set of stairs, and they're fractured, like the stone of the mountain pass has been fractured, black, lifeless, and you see that these stairs lead steeply up towards what must have been a palace. The stone of the palace also cracked, and as you start to climb these stairs, catching up with the rest of the Antiqua, it smells... It doesn't smell of decay. It's more... It's more unsettling than that. It smells like an absence of life. It smells like nothing. Like there's nothing here. And every time you take a step, you feel that the, the stone almost starts to give way, like you're standing on spent charcoal, like it's crumbling. This, this whole place is, is crumbling. There's no sound, and the only colours are, are, are the colours that still are streaking across the sky, these swirling patterns and raging against this black. And without, without these, these colours, this black would feel like it was endless. And the steps lead up towards this open plaza, and there is a shape lying at the center of a plaza. And I'm gonna roll, okay, I rolled a nat 20. Carvilius gets there first. And as she, as she runs up, she gets to this figure and you hear, you hear her, in fact, the two of you would hear this in Draconic. Uh, or perhaps, I think you would know, you would have enough command of it. You hear, you just hear no. This, this violent, sudden flood of emotion. And as you all gather round, you see, you see she's cradling a dragonborn. The body of a god. And there's no life in that body. And that's where we'll end our session. It's all right, I didn't care about him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That is um, the end of session one of Reliquiae. Oh, well, you don't do things by hand. No, no, do you? if you're going to do it, you might. If you're going to tell a story, you may as well tell it. Um, thank you, everyone, so much for watching, for listening, for supporting us in however, wherever you're doing that. Um, we are going to now stop for our post show. Uh, action surge so hopefully you can have a little listen to that on whatever platform you might find it and thank you very much for joining us on the first of what is we think is going to be very very many adventures in reliquia we are natural six or something yeah, yeah. yeah we are <laughs>